I am Mr. Eager DM at your service, and we welcome you one and all to Trapped at Home, a live stream Dungeons and Dragons experience brought to you by Lawful Stupid RPG. Thank you for being here. We do appreciate it. For the past year, this group has been playing through the 5th edition module Descent into Avernus, and tonight we begin a new chapter in this saga. However, you may have noticed that some things have changed. Two of our characters, Persephone the Bard and Falcon the Cleric, have just become brand new parents in real life. Uh, as such, they will be unavailable for such things like a four hour long D&D game for the foreseeable future. Um, while they're away, we will be offering to you descendants of Avernus. Joining us today, we have our new cast, Zelmira the Monk, Cordelia the Cleric, Shamsiel the Fighter. Um, I did not get a chance to put in your new name, uh, Jade. I still have Harad Tortoise up, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> but the actual name is Bolitas, Bolitas. the Druid, yeah. Artem the Artificer, Sekhmet the Sorcerer, and Jexter the Bard. Well then, if there are no further announcements, questions, comments, or insults, very well. My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Nestled just west of the enormous forest, the Neverwinter Wood, lies the small hamlet of Longsaddle, home to but a dozen or so families, farmers, ranchers, and tradesmen. It is nevertheless a vital stop for travelers on the long road, being one of only three settlements between the cities of Waterdeep and Mirabar. With such a well-traveled byway at its doorstep, a newcomer might wonder why this tiny collection of dwellings, five or so shops and taverns and rolling hills, hasn't grown by so much as an acre over the last century. Indeed, there isn't even a wall to keep out marauders that would otherwise wreak havoc on other such ripe targets across the savage frontier. The answer to this question comes in the form of one name, the Harples. On the opposite side of the road from Long Sandgoat Saddle rises the Ivy Mansion, home to one of the most powerful wizard dynasties in all of Faerun. The name Harple has found its way into great tales and legends in all corners of the continent, and it is their reputation that keeps the town of Long Saddle both protected and small. Generally known to be kind-hearted, if capricious, their brand of magic has been referred to as spectacularly powerful, confusing, and unpredictable. As such, the inhabitants of Longsaddle have become accustomed to odd goings-on. It's only been two years since Sugarbell, the goat lieth, trampled every field of wheat in a six-mile radius, and the sneezing fits that resulted in spontaneous switching of gender has yet to be fully sorted out. However, Every problem that the Harple's eccentric magic creates, they seem to be able to undo sooner or later. And the benefits of living close to such powerful arcanists usually outweighs the detriments. Adventurers, a year ago, after an exhaustive vetting process, you were hired by Kipper Harple, the eldest sage at the Ivy Mansion, to accompany his grandnephew, Jexter, in his travels. What started as a simple escort job turned into a grand adventure, which led you all the way to the jungles of Cholt and back again with many a tale to tell and coin to spend. For the past five, 10 days, you have been scattered to the four winds, released from your obligations to the Harple family and free to seek your own bliss, however you saw fit. But as the days passed, you found yourself looking back at your recent jungle adventures with more and more fondness. What at first seemed just to be another group of mercenaries grew through your shared peril and misadventures into a family of friends you find yourself longing to see again. 
It was therefore welcome news when you heard from Jexter Harple inviting you back to Long Saddle with the promise of more adventure. You arrive at the mansion a few hours before dusk, the familiar spires bedecked with their verdant tendrils. The mansion consists of one main building and there are two sort of farmhouse-like structures to either side. And as you approach, there is a small brook that moves around and towards it, sort of encircling it, and also a, a wall. Um, I'm gonna do a little random rolling here to see who arrives first. Okay, this would be uh, Cordelia arriving first. Cordelia, are you mounted? I mean, I would like to be. Absolutely. So as you arrive, uh, you would probably have remembered this. It's been a long time since you've been back here, but there is a few. there are a few odd things as you approach the mansion. First of all, the river, this little brook that goes, actually runs uphill. Um, there doesn't seem to be any reason for it that you could determine. It is, however, quite odd. Also, there is one bridge that goes over it, and it is not very wide. Um, some decades ago, rather than decide to make the bridge bigger, the Harples decided to make it the over-under bridge. To enter into the Ivy Mansion, you actually step off of the bridge to the underside of it and walk with your horse, who seems oddly unperturbed by this, upside down, so that anybody leaving can walk on the upper part of the bridge. <laughs> you then reach the other side of the shore and are able to move into the large uh, courtyard that this wall is around. And another odd thing um, that would have surprised you the first time you see it, but it is now something that you remember and are not surprised by, as you get close to the wall, there's something odd about it. And you remember before, it's actually painted. The wall that surrounds the Ivy Mansion is invisible and extremely powerful, uh, both acting as a ward to magic and physical um, attacks or, or uh, any, anything passing through it. And it was only after several uh, spectacular uh, destroyed birds um, that somebody had the idea, this is probably not a good idea. And rather than change the wall so that it could be visible, they just painted it to look like an actual wall. <laughs> so from the other side of the wall, when you look at it, it just, it, it's clearly um, just a, a mass of just brown paint on the, uh, as you approach it, it actually looks, you know, somebody went to some effort to give it some dimension and some three dimensionality. So that it looks like a wall up until about two or three feet away from it. And you, the perspective becomes too wrong to ignore and crossing <laughs> on the other side, you see, okay, that's very strange. <laughs> um, you were not mounted the first time you arrived at uh, the Ivy Mansion. Um, and as such, you are a little surprised as you feel your horse's um, control leave you, uh, you feel your horse is no longer under your control as it begins to sort of placidly move towards one side of the, uh, the Ivy Mansion, um, moving to what you know is the tavern and inn that is maintained by the Harple and actually a Harples and actually abuts up against the mansion, the fuzzy quarter staff. Um, they have a stables and your horse seems to be moving right towards it. And as it does, I'm gonna need you to make a dexterity saving throw. I shall do. Uh, let me do this really quick. Hoping that rolls it. Nine. I see it, you rolled a nine. Unfortunately, you fall ass over tea kettle as the horse shrinks underneath you to the size of a small cat and continues to make its way towards a very small stable that abuts up against the, uh, the fuzzy quarterstaff. Um, and you just sort of sit there looking at it, confused. All right, I know I named you Madness, but this is... Hmm. Okay. Right, and, and Cordelia will stand up and 
kind of dust herself off, looking around, making sure no one saw that. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> somebody did. You see a stable hand uh, sitting uh, on a stool right outside the uh, the small stable, which is about the size of a shed. Um, and he sort of looks at you and says, First time to the mansion. He's got a shock of vibrant red hair um, and a, a little soul patch that comes down and twists all the way down to his navel and has a little bell at the bottom of it. Uh, no, but it's the first time I bought my mount. Um, you should really ask permission before doing that. Uh, it's one of the few pleasures that we have here. No harm done. So much easier to care for them when they're so small. Takes less feed, takes less space, takes less cleaning. I'm surprised more people don't do it. it. Happens to everything that comes over the bridge with four legs. Great. Um, well, harm could have been done, so... If you don't mind, I'm going to wait and um, warn my friends when they arrive. Oh, suit yourself. Had my fun. Come here, you little bugger. That's a good boy. Come on, come on. And he just sort of reaches down and picks up your horse, puts it under his arm and moves into the shed. Um, and one by one, crossing the bridge, you see the rest of your companions arrive within about 15, 25 minutes of each other. Um, you've all been in communication with Jexter through magic and other means to know that this is the day appointed and this is the time. First to arrive after Cordelia is Sekhmet. Sekhmet, please describe your character at which point I will ask Cordelia to describe hers. Sekhmet, you are muted. Yes. I'm sorry, I was I was reading the comments in the chat. Ah. <laughs> it's so easy to do. I know, I, I got confused. I'm sorry. So Sekhmet, will you uh, um, describe your character as you arrive? And please do tell me if you're mounted. I am not mounted. Oh, I would, I you would take not, all the fun out of things. Would not ride a horse, okay. at least not not willingly. Um, I I am a tabaxi. Um, very uh <laughs> confident, hype out of myself. Um, lots of powers from within. I come from faraway land of. I might butcher this. Molrond? Mol Molrond. Molrond. Yes. yes. There's a very famous street named after it in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, your appearance? Uh, I'm a dark furred tabaxi. Um, so obviously I look like a cat, a very humanoid cat. I've got, I can walk upright, but I've got the paws and the claws and the ears. I've got gold rings in my ears. I've got a big ornate neck band, um, beaded in gold and just very fanciful. Don't call it a collar. It is more of a necklace. Um, and in it, I have a gold amulet of the sun within the center, this immaculate shining crystal. And then I've got just kind of fancy silk and clothes on around with a gold belt and simply and yet very ornately dressed. Very good, thank you very much, Sekhmet. Uh, this exotic looking uh, companion of yours makes her way across the underside of the bridge before scampering and lightly landing upright on the other side. Cordelia, please describe yourself to our viewers. Cordelia is an average height uh, asthma. She has short black hair a large scar going over one of her eyes, um, dressed completely in black, very gothic, um, and just has a consistent look of disdain upon her face um, at pretty much anything and everything around her, really. All right. Um, clothes, uh, accessories? Clothes she's wearing, um, she's wearing, Goodness, you've put me on the spot. What armor is she wearing? She's wearing a chain mail um, and it is anything underneath is just completely black. She's got um, a lot of just 
uh, like fabric accessories um, around her hands, around her neck, and um, almost covering up a fair amount of skin. Um, and just almost looks as if she's just like almost in a one piece, just completely black, like outfit, really. Um, minus the chain mail, obviously. <laughs> Very good. It's quite, it's quite bland. It's quite bland. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, that will bring us to Shane. Shane, are you mounted? Well, yeah. Um, were you mounted the last time you arrived? <laughs> I don't remember, but okay. probably uh, not. Because then please roll. Uh, well, uh, Cordelia, first of all, do you warn Shane as you see him um, I... clip clopping on the underside of this bridge over the backwards flowing river? I, I would warn Shane. All um, right. What do you say? Shane, um, the people here will shrink your horse. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> what? I don't... What does that mean? Madness. My horse. My beautiful war horse. It's okay, yeah. Yeah, they shrunk her. Oh. As you're sort of walking towards her, you begin to feel something is odd about your horse and it's... So uh, make a dexterity save with advantage for the warning. Okay. Oops. Let's go with a... I like to think he's very confused looking and Cody was like, they are currently shrinking your horse, Shane. Yeah, he's, he's kind of looking around. He doesn't um, hasn't quite noticed. He, he, he tends to be looking off into the distance most of the time. Uh, but he's got a 21 to save. Which is more than enough to sort of just keep your feet as your horse and its bridle and its uh, saddle and um, anything on it that you won't be needing on your person for adventuring uh, just sort of shrinks down as it placidly moves without your control, moving towards this little shed over to the next uh, next to the uh, Ivy Mansion. Um, please describe what you look like, Shane. Um, Shane is um, a tall. He looks kind of just like a um, a very young man. He is got this sort of shock of curly brown hair that um, kind of um, curls over his ears and just down over his forehead a bit, but it's not quite enough to. Um, to fall over his eyes. His eyes themselves are sort of this pale gray, light blue color that always seem to be gazing into the distance. He seems distracted at times, but whenever someone meets his attention, he all his eyes will just whoop and it will be a um, intense but very friendly gaze always met by a warm smile. Um, he has a, a couple, a, um, sort of, it looks like he's been raked across the face by a creature at one time, a series of thin lines sort of going across the face, um, but the scars seem to be healing very well. Um, again, he is tall and well-built, but lithe, with um, wearing leather armor that is um, uh, sort of bolstered by brass studs all across it in sort of a nice um, cloud-like pattern. Uh, he has a very large pack with a um, a silver-looking longbow slung across his shoulders. As he um, walks forward and smiles, uh, he says, um, Oh, hey, Sec. Hey, Cordy. Um, hey, I thought you were going to wait for me back there. That water was just was really pretty. Um, it was just like the perfect blue, you know? But um, anyway, what happened to your hair? Oh, you fell off, right. Okay, I got it now. <laughs> so, Hi, guys. You have a little chit-chat conversation. Um, but uh, right behind you um, is the pair of tieflings, Artem and Zelmira Apteon. Are you two mounted? I am most certainly not mounted, no. No, right. we are. We are. Well, we have a herd of elephants behind us, right? Oh, well, yes. this is the right place to bring a herd of elephants, let me tell you. No, no mounts. Prince um, Ali! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So as you step and walk along the bottom of this bridge and you then right yourself um, on the other side, you see um, your three companions there. Um, Artem, why don't you start off describing yourself? 
Sure. Um, Artem is uh, walking behind Zelmira. He's clutching something very excitedly in his hand, and he is uh, tinkering with his arm. Artem is a, a dark red-skinned tiefling with jet black hair uh, that he has uh, combed over one of his horns. Um, he has a very professorial appearance to him. He's rather thin. Uh, he's wearing breastplate armor, a uh, very thin breastplate armor that he has put a shirt and a leather vest over to make him look a little bit bigger than he actually is. Um, he's missing his right arm from the elbow down and it has been replaced with a very thick mechanical arm and um, and uh, metal digits um, that each finger looks like it does something uh, a little bit different. Um, he is uh, very excited to see uh, this group of people because for the first time in his life, he has actually made friends and that is a uh, new phenomenon to him. So you can see that he's kind of bubbling giddy with excitement to share what he has in his left hand. He wears glasses and the right lens of the glasses has um, almost like a little microscope that kind of juts out, so you can only really see his left oh, eye. What's the name? It's a Lou, right? L O U P that they use in um, in uh, jeweler shops. That's I of think thing? it's actually a Lou Lou. Up like the ha! <laughs> see what you did there. You put two of them together, and you yeah. <sighs> That's Artem. All right, um, and right next to him is Zelmira. Yes. So. Um, clad in sort of silken, martial-looking clothing uh, is Zelmira the monk. Her clothes are simple, they're black, and they're well-fitted, but they have little silver enamel just kind of like inside, woven into the arms. And she is roughly the same height as her brother, just a little bit shorter. She has purple, sort of luminescent skin. Her hair is long, dark, and black with two streaks of, like, shocks of silver that extend starting at the temple all the way down into the rest of her hair. She has an incredible amount of confidence and swagger, and she is clearly here to get a job done. And I would say that she's not as immediately impressed by their companions, but is happy to be spending more time with her brother. Fair enough. Um, so the five of you have a moment to converse among yourselves while you wait for the rest of your companions, if you wish. Cordelia, Sack, Shane, check it out, check it out. and. Uh, uh, Artem runs forward and he uh, has something in his fist and he opens it and inside is a jade stone. Look, <laughs> look, <laughs> look what I did. And so um, he extends his pinky finger out and from it comes a uh, metal extension that touches the stone and surrounds it. And then you see metal from his arm detach and crawl down his arm to form around the stone. And slowly over the course of the next minute, a little baby dragon, a metallic baby dragon forms and floats up for just a moment and sets on his shoulder. And he is beaming with pride. Where did you find that? No, I, I, I made him, I made him. The jade, where'd you find the jade? Oh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I, I, I think I bought it. I can't remember. Um, oh. and I was too focused on my plans. I made plans. Huh, and I huh, I made him Jade. Can I, can I hold him? Uh, sure. And and so uh, he gives a little nudge with his shoulder and uh, the, the little dragon alights uh, into your hand. I think you find Jade somewhere in the south, south end of London. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's where you uh, mm. where you, you, go, you harvest it. <laughs> did you did you name it? Uh I, I I've been just calling it Jade. Mm. I haven't been feeling particularly creative about that. Uh, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I believe its proper name is Jadarian. Yeah. <laughs> You're a man of science, right, Autumn? <laughs> uh, I mean, I I, I make things. 
<laughs> she will extend her hand to Sekvet for the dragon. I hand it over. And then I will gently place it on the ground. <laughs> DM, does it shrink? <laughs> it has to walk on the bridge, unfortunately. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. She puts it on the ground, watches it, and then just... <laughs> no, um, one, when you're on, once you're on the grounds of the Ivy Mansion, the magic is, uh, does only affects things that cross the bridge um, that have four legs or more. Belmira, seeing this wonderful work that Artem worked so tirelessly to create, becomes immediately defensive and swoops in picks up the dragon and places it back in Artem's care. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You've done a wonderful job, Artem. And she kind of looks over at Cordelia. A little sus. He's, uh, if he could blush through his red skin, he would do so. (laughs) Slightly more burgundy. (laughs) Yes, yes. Mm, That's really cool, Artie. That's... (laughs) I, I learned to make stuff too while we were gone, actually. Um, oh, see, and he kind of takes off his pack and <laughs> sets no it on one the ground. Wants to know like, about this. So I this is really heavy. Um, but I bought a crucible. Um and I bought um well, it's all this stuff. I'm making glass now. Which reminds me, um, Zell, I, I made something for you. Where'd it go? And he kind of digs around in the pack <laughs> and he takes out just um, what certainly looks like it must be a glass blower's first attempt. Somewhere <laughs> between a vase and a bottle and an ashtray all at once, it is abstract, but it is um, solid. And it bears a sort of similar hue to her skin tone. And he said, yeah, it just, it's, it came out so clear and I thought of you, so here you go. And he just holds out this just chunk of glass. Elmira walks over and accepts the glass, immediately noting the similarity in the tone of the glass and the color of her own skin. She kind of holds it up and notices that there's very little difference between the two. And she really appreciates that, despite the fact that it is not an aesthetically pleasing shape. (laughs) And so in spite of herself, smiles and says, thank you, Shane. Um, I don't remember the ingredients I used for it. It was kind of an accident, but... um... Oh, I can tell you. And he'll, uh, he will take it out of her hand and he will immediately like kind of zoom in and start analyzing right, it. Uh, make an, uh, an alchemist's tools check, please. Sure. Cordelia, head in her hands, is like, I have heard nothing else besides glass for months. I thought this would be my break. I thought this would be my break. I told you I was going to buy a really little one that I can apparently take with me. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, sorry. Oh. Uh, with a 13, um, Oh, and that's one thing we did forget to mention for our newcomers, uh, which I uh, Artem is not one of, so I'll just apologize for jumping on him right here. But um, when you do roll, uh, announce what you roll so that the people who may or may not be able to see what's happening know what happened. They were talking. <laughs> you know, it was I know. A, it, it was a 13. Which is enough for you to deduce uh, probably a couple of chemical in- impurities to um, to create this particular color. Um, you have a pretty good idea of, of what ones they would be. Um, you don't know if it'd be the exact recipe and you probably have to do a little trial and error to get the exact color, but you know you know what to use to create the, uh, the effect. Yeah, I could, uh, I could probably help you improve on your methods if you, if you want to talk about it. <laughs> sure, do I need a to do it? Do I need oh, that? Well, one? I mean, if if you need one, you can, <laughs> you can borrow mine. <laughs> really? Always willing to lend a hand. <laughs> um, anything else, friends, as uh, you see in the distance, uh, a familiar, rather round um, uh, shape making its way towards you? Sylvia so just points out the round shape. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Then Boletus, you arrive. Are you mounted? No, he comes in as a horse. <laughs> he comes in as a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So 
you see uh, not a rounded shape, forgive me, a, uh, a riderless horse um, come. <laughs> um, and as he approaches the, the bridge, stops for a moment. And then do you go across the bridge as a horse? Yes. All right. So begins to go underneath the bridge, comes out the other side and comes to the uh, edge. And you all look at this riderless horse who sort of looks at you with preternaturally intelligent eyes as you watch it begin to... And it gets about three quarters of its size before <laughs> Wild Shape drops, Melitus, and you are a uh, turtle once again. Uh, Describe yourself to your group. He is a total spores druid. He is covered in mushrooms and dust and just grime. He smells quite off putting, looks quite off putting, um, but looks endearing in a way. It looks like he's very could be very old. Um, he carries a short staff, um, more like a sort of like, well, like a walking stick sort of thing, and yeah, it's basically what he looks like. P massive like stalks of uh, mushrooms and stuff like that hanging off of his back. And there are the rest of your um, companions from uh, not too long ago. Standing, greeting you. Am I still small? No, uh, once <laughs> wild shape, as, as it began to affect the uh, the druid magic, it dropped the wild shape and you are now back in your um, normal turtle, turtle size. <laughs> oh, oh my I dear. <laughs> I thought I was going to ask, to ask you for a carry. <laughs> it's good to see you, Malius. And you, my dear. He will just start slowly walk in. Like he's extremely old. <laughs> so darling. <laughs> I know. Excellent. Well, as Bolitas uh, begins to make his way past you all, uh, heading towards the uh, the tavern, Bolitas? Uh, yes, with the group. Uh, the door of it opens, and stepping out is the familiar form of Jest Jexter Harple. Um, Jexter, would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to our viewers? Absolutely. I am Jexter Harple. I'm so happy to be here, especially now that my friends are here to get me out of the godforsaken place. Um, oh, but I am a male human bard. I have lovely brown hair. Sometimes I slick it back a little bit. I have a lovely mustache, but no chin beard. I wouldn't be so crass as that. I stand approximately less than six foot tall, looking strikingly like our very own storyteller here. <laughs> <laughs> amazingly handsome, skilled to no end. Mm. And as my party will know, entirely sick of my family. Bunch of spellcasting boars. Ugh, they're still trying to make me into a wizard. It's never going to happen. Never. <laughs> Instead, I need a life of adventure. As I set forth in my fine clothing, which is hiding my leather jacket and my nice red cape. It's don't. It's not brown. It's red. It's rust. It's whatever. I know that my friends are here, and I can rest easy once again, and they can rescue me from my parents, and the rest of my family. Did I mention that I hate my family? This Ivy Mansion place. I know everybody at the bridge, upside down. Whatever. Ugh. They're so snobby. God bunch of magic oh, anyway uh, present company accepted my friends of course sorcerers are different than wizards quite so um so reunited once again uh, the adventurers all make their way into the tavern unless anybody wishes to not go into the tavern all right. So you make your way into the fuzzy quarterstaff. It is a uh, tavern and uh, inn that is run by the Harples. Um, however, there's very little staff. The central room is circular, um, and there are uh, plenty of seats and tables. Um, you'd only see one other guest in the um, in the uh, common room at the moment, and it is uh, a strange sight, a uh, large... Um, he, oh, uh, just about medium-sized otter um, wearing a uh, robe 
um, and um, eating a large plate of what looks to be some sort of shellfish. Um, each of the tables is circular with chairs around it, and the center of it has a blue gem. Um, and you remember from the last time you were here, all you have to do is touch the gem and say what you want, and it will come floating to you fairly soon. There is a uh, set price of um, eight gold pieces for uh, a, a meal and staying in any room in the inn. Um, and you have yet to have asked for something to eat or drink that uh, has not been able to have been provided. Um, some people come with very exotic uh, requests to just see if they can confound the magic of the Harples here in the fuzzy quarterstaff. But so far, no one has succeeded. Uh, and as you all take your seats uh, around uh, two tables, um, you look over and uh, coming through a, um, actually a wall, uh, there is no door, You're just sort of stepping through a wall and appearing is a very um, impressive looking elderly gentleman with a very uh, close cupped uh, gray beard, um, long gray hair, wearing a black robe. And he steps uh, to one corner of the room and faces the interior of the common room and raises his hands and then begins to conduct. And as he does, very gently playing orchestral music begins to fill the uh, common room. And it is not overpowering. It is very um, pleasing and delightful to sit and eat and drink to. And you all have a moment to reconnect, if you wish. Ooh. Uh, Shane will walk up to the crystal, put his hand on it, kind of look around and say... The crystal is... There, each table has a crystal. Oh, each it. table. So he'll just reach out, put his hand on the crystal before anyone else, and he will say, Whiskey. No, wait, 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 wait. What time is it? Uh, it... It's past whiskey o'clock. Whiskey. All right. Peated whiskey. Yeah. Peated whiskey. So there's a as the um, crystal glows, um, and you probably have only a few moments to wait until a cup comes floating he, over you. Over he keeps you. his hand on it and says, "Bolitus, what do you want?" Oh, uh, just some lettuce. I'm trying to keep the stereotype up. <laughs> Lettuce. Sorry. Segment, what do you want? Oh, tomatoes as well. Tomatoes. I like tomatoes. Segment, fish. what do you want? Fried fish, grapes, wine, bread. Fried pineapple. fish, grape, brine, <laughs> grapes, bread. Oh my God, wine. Segment, you got even more high maintenance. Ah. No, I just always have a feast fit for me. What I said. Cordelia, what do you want? Absinthe. <laughs> yes! Two Very absinthe. best. Two absinths with with the full with do you, want, do you want the sugar cube with it? Do you want to do the whole spoon thing over the glass? Just right. Just straight up ab two absinths. I told you if you Neat. bought the glass blowing kit, I I will just talk about it later. I'll make you a, I'll make you a, I don't know. <laughs> Artem, what do you want? Um, uh, 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 uh spicy vegetable soup and, uh, uh, maybe a glass of goat's milk. <laughs> okay. Zalmira, what do you want? Um, their finest and driest red wine. Ooh. And <laughs> a steak tartare. Ooh. <laughs> I like what I like. I know what I'm about. Right. Well, that's dusty wine and raw meat. So, right. All right. Jexter. Zelmira is visibly aggravated by this. He looks God. over and kind of, and kind of, and winks a little bit and smiles. He doesn't really judge anyone. Again, in spite of herself, a little smile comes across her face. Shane. Oh my god, if you weren't so cute, I'd kill you. Just water, please. I, just mm. just look good. Just stand there and look good for me. Mm. I mean, that I can do, but you need something besides water, Jexter. 
I'm after us listening to your diatribe about this boring ass house but we all like it a lot so what do you want i'm here all the time i get what i want all the time it's just water. except now because now you can't order water <laughs> what do you want you know what i've heard that uh there's a new vodka in town bring me some of that do you have Ooh. a line on that shane oh yes oh it's got some from an artesian well filtered by limestone water it's coming right up all right <laughs> water as shane sits down and shuts up for a while after ordering for everyone doesn't quite uh, get how the thing works um there's a little bit of um uh, intuitive magic involved here so um so it all comes to, uh, to my table. Uh, it my all spot. comes to your spot. <laughs> um, as first comes a glass of whiskey, and then followed by that is um, a, a plate of lettuce with tomatoes, um, and then all of everybody's uh, various drinks and food orders all come and pile themselves, starting uh, with the whiskey in the middle, and then sort of um, uh, spreading out from there around the table, um, and you all are able to eat and drink your fill and sort of reconnect. And um, of course there is one question in everybody's mind and that is, why are you here? For the lettuce. For the lettuce. <laughs> That's the end of the campaign, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> they got it right in one, and yeah. we're done. Thank you. Thanks for the lettuce. Uh, um, we are the mercenaries of Descendants into a Very much. We're only here for the lettuce. Thank you, everyone. I know why we're all here. Let me just tell you what. You would not believe the gossip that I heard. Seriously. I feel like I might be able to believe it, but go ahead. Well, there's this... There's this lady, she's like, I think she's like a tiefling. Uh, Sylvira, I think. You realize you're talking about me, correct? No, not Zelmyra. Zelmyra? Who's Zelmyra? Zelmyra <laughs> she's, Oh, she's... I'm sorry, I misheard you and I just assumed yes. you didn't know who I was. Of course I know who you are, <laughs> darling. Of course I know okay. who you are. Okay. No, she does not like some... being called darling. <laughs> This is, I don't like being called many things, but we'll get to that. Um, it's one of these ladies that candle keep. She's very proper, very proper. And there was, so there was a little conversation between her and my great uncle, who is not so great, let me tell you, Kipper. And they were talking about all these things going on in El Terrell. And I don't know exactly what's going on in El Terrell, but I know it's important. Something is going on in El Terrell. I know that we are the right people to find out. So everyone should take me there instead of here so that we can do good things at El Oh, that'd be awesome. Artem, uh, having recently been at Candlekeep, you are well familiar with this. Uh, one of the great readers of Candlekeep, uh, Silvia Savakas, also the only tiefling great reader. Um, you have never met her personally and you will need to roll a um, intelligence just a straight intelligence roll to see if you can recall what her area of expertise is. Done. Uh, uh, that would be a critical fail for a five. You know she's a tiefling. You know she's one of the great readers. Uh, so she's there is uh, there is uh, sort of a, a, a one. There's two degrees of importance above her. So there's like the head librarian, and then the librarian that's in charge of all of the great readers, and then each of the great readers is a um, uh, expert in their area of expertise. You have no idea what hers is. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know her, but huh, I think it'd be really cool to meet her. Huh. And uh, you see, absentmindedly, his thumb joint kind of opens, and some uh, dark powder he just kind of shakes into his soup. And then the thumb joint closes and he stirs it and continues eating. So listen, here's the deal. Kipper, my great uncle, again, not so great, was talking and there's this friend of his here, a Corcoran pebble moss, very important fancy guy. Okay. Old as dirt. And he's here right now. He's really, I, I mean, I've, I've kind of watched him a little bit. He's kind of interesting. Uh, 
Like in um, this tavern? Yes. In this very tavern. In this very tavern. He is here, here with us at the Fuzzy Quarter Step. That's why I called you all here. Because he has these details. He is in with this Sylvira lady. Um, I think they're both a little bit dry. Um, I tried to like ask him some questions. and, But anyway, um, this guy Corcoran, he knows what's going on. He's really smart. Um, he really travels a lot. I've seen him before here with Kipper. Um, Kipper's incredibly boring, but he's kind of neat. Talks way too much, not like me. But I'm telling you, if we can meet up with this guy Corcoran, then great things await for us. And I'm talking the type of thing that I can make a song about and I don't make songs, people, okay? Really great things, really great things. We just Tell have to Mira get with this guy. Leans over to Artem. It isn't his job to write songs? I, I, I think he's just, you know, kind of being funny. <laughs> I don't get it. Leans over. Not that kind of bard. Um, so, as you eat and drink and listen to Jexter's uh, explanation of this, you all sort of take this in. You could process it as you wish. Um, you had a very lucrative uh, adventure um, in your previous time with Jexter. Um, and if you are interested in that sort of thing, then this might appeal to you. However, as the conversation goes and you try to get more details of which Jexter has relatively light. Jexter, you hear in your mind an intake of breath that is not your own. And you are familiar with this. This is the herald of Kipper Harkle, uh, Harple um, sending, uh, using the spell sending. Um, and for whatever reason, his uh, version of sending is just a few decibels higher than is necessary. And so you brace yourself as you hear this. <sighs> Jaxa, you're in the staff with people, yes? Pebble Moss is in one of the rooms, not answering my calls. Find him, please. And that is all. So I just got a magic he's... message. I'm sorry. Um, again, with the magic, they can't just walk in and ask a question. They can't just say hi. Apparently, Corcoran's not being very cooperative, so we're going to go find him. He's in one of these rooms. I'm sure we can find him. There's only so many rooms here. We're all finding him, or you're going? Well, don't you want to see the rooms? How nice are they on a scale of one to ten? They're the best in Long Saddle. Okay, yeah, I'm down. I'm in. I want to see those stained glass windows from the other side. I bet that's nice, even though it's dark out right now, but it's still probably nice. Uh, I can uh, light them for you if you're interested. <laughs> oh, actually, I could do that too. Have any of you in your travels, because it's been a while since we talked, have any of you come across any sort of magic items that can just block these types of little messages that pop into your brain? What I would give for some type of device. <sighs> I, I cast message into his mind and I just say, I can't block it, but I can distract it. So that's a very odd sensation because <laughs> Segment has to say this out loud in order for the message just so you, you see her say it and then you hear it in your head is sort of stereo. We all know and how much he loves that. Right on top of it, you hear again, you didn't respond. Did you receive my message? Is anybody hearing these? And these are the Where sorts of shenanigans. Yes. Um, um, we'll go find him. F fine. <laughs> That's it. Zelmira looks at Artie. I will never get used to that. What just happened there? Never going to get used to it. He just gives anyway. her a little elbow nudge with his good arm. <laughs> She's smiling. All Something I... must be wrong with Corcoran because I'm telling you, all he does is come in here and tell people stories about how great he is. That's all he's been doing since he got here. He's, again, he's a nice old folk, but... Isn't that kind of what you do? I haven't said at all how fabulous I am. <laughs> 
So uh, does everybody follow uh, Jackster as he goes to uh, see if he can find um, Corcoran Pebblemoss, or do you let him go by himself? No, I, I stand up and head, or at least see if anyone else will stand up or head wherever he's heading if he's walked away. I it was that. your job for the better part of two years to make sure that Jexter was safe. Um, and so as he stands up to move, you almost instinctively all sort of, instinctually all sort of stand up and begin to move before like, wait a minute, nobody's actually paying us to do this anymore. But then habit, you sort of clop along behind him. Um, and uh, with a few questions of uh, one of the staff who is... Uh, Again, another one of these fellows, a very shock of very, very bright red hair. Um, and Cordelia, you look at it and you think that's the same guy. And then you look again and it's slightly different. Uh, his eyebrows have um, uh, changed color. They're blue. And instead of a bell at the bottom of his, um, uh, his long goatee, it's actually a, a collection of feathers um, tied up in twine. Um, he informs you of uh, the room that Corcoran Pebblemoss is staying in. And he sort of scratches his head and says, this has actually been in there for a few days. Hasn't come out for any food or drink. Um, you, know. you haven't thought to check on him. Well, he's got very specific instructions. and you know, He's a powerful man. Many of the people who come here to the fuzzy quarter stuff are powerful people. And uh, you learn quite soon not to just barge in. Unless you, you have, know how uh, powerful I am. I don't. Um, who are you? I am Sekhmet. Ah. I am goddess of the sun, daughter of Rall, goddess of fire and, and war. Wow. He us to go see Corcoran. Um, well, he's right. I, that's his oh, room and, right and, there. But that's that's incredible. I've never met um, all those things before. Uh, so my how do you do? My name is Brian. Snickers under her breath. Brian Kipper wants him, so we're going in. Oh, well, you're a Harple. You can go wherever you want. <laughs> I just... You don't know how sick I am of hearing that. <sighs> I'll knock on the door. All right. There is no response. Dexter, open the door. I open the door. <laughs> so you put your you put your hand on the doorknob, and there's a... As uh, you can feel it, it's locked. But as you touch it, there's a and it unlocks and the door opens, revealing a very comfortable, um, not ostentatious, but very clean um, and well-maintained uh, tavern room. Um, there is a single bed, uh, there is a window, um, and there is a, a dresser with a, a basin and a, a pitcher, um, and a very simple rug upon the floor, um, and a desk and a t um, chair. Um, on the desk is uh, a book single book and um in the middle of the room is an odd creature about um about nine to 13 inches tall hard to tell because it's kind of hunched over it's got wings it's gray um has a sort of misshapen but vaguely humanoid face kind of looks up at you all and goes Uh, those of you who are trained in Arcana are familiar with this. This is a homunculus, a very common um, wizard uh, uh, familiar. I, I turn to everyone and say, uh, that's not Corcoran. That's, that's not him. He's wrinkled, but not like that. Um, where's Corcoran? <laughs> points towards the desk. Is that a language that anyone here understands? Um, nobody in this party is capable of understanding this language, if it is in fact language. <laughs> Artem, what is that? I, I, I'm actually not familiar. I'm very, very curious. And uh, he goes up to the homunculus and kind of looks at it very closely with his uh, microscope <laughs> eye. Sort of looks back at you, and as it does, as it does, its face kind of just sort of squinches up, really, really small, sort of a frown as it its its brow just sort of furrows, and it sort of makes its face very small. It flies flies up uh, higher as you're looking at it. Uh, he will respond by uh, taking Jade and uh, rubbing her snout and kind of offering it up to the homunculus 
with his own homunculus and uh, gently sends it to perch near him. That's so sweet. <laughs> and he sort of tosses it and <laughs> flies undamaged back over to your shoulder. Um, and he seems perturbed, but then... <laughs> Um, and DM is <laughs> just finished. gesticulating wildly. <laughs> Extremely hard to make out what he's trying to do. If he's doing any kind of pantomime, it is very poorly done. So, so DM, knowing that uh, these things just constantly run around this place, uh, do they actually speak a language if I were to have the ability to understand any language? Make an arcana check. I could do that. And, um, oh, that's different. It's an 11. That's not very good. And an 11. You have never heard Apunculus speak common. Um, very few actually make noise. Uh, they can communicate with their masters or their mistresses, and that is all. I look, I look at it and the desk. Is that what it's pointing to, the desk? Mm -hmm. First, I turn to Zomir. Zomir, your room is way better than this one. Trust me. I don't. Does I don't it know. come with a dot? No. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you want one. I mean, I thought I it was only the best here. Um, That's not the best. Oh, are there better ones of that? Oh God, yes. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll take one. Okay. Well, anyway, the, your room is better than this one. Trust me. Um, I do. Kipper must have been mad at Corcoran. This is not a good room at all. <laughs> um, it, it, what what's on the desk? Um, a yep. single tome. It's about uh, four inches tall, um, dark leather embossed with gold. And on the front, in a circular sort of plate, um, there is the uh, visage of a bald man with a long waxed mustache, and pointed beard. He's looking at, at whoever is looking at the book with a raised eyebrow and kind of a, you really know what you're doing kind of look. Um, and on the spine, there's a title in common. It says, The Joys of Extra Dimensional Spaces. I can't tell if that's a journal or a spell book. Please let it be a journal. Artem will go Please and take a look at it just to do a visual, uh, a visual inspection. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check or a perception check. It depends. If you're just looking at it, you're not going to be able to see much more than what I've just said. So if you uh, want to actually look at it and, and I will um, in investigate it. Meanwhile, meanwhile, while we're doing that, I just want to say a massive thank you to Pixie Quinn for $5. Yay. Um, oh, thank you. That rewards one of the players an inspiration. DM, if you want to do your usual oh, macro. Shoot. Oh, I don't think I, I didn't make the macro. macro. I don't it have it ready. Them. It's part of your... It's, it go, it, it's, it's, it's there? It's based, I think. Uh, is it? Maybe no, it's, it's nope. No, it's not there. Just roll d twenty quick. Everybody quickly roll d twenty okay. quickly. Oh, I knew I was forgetting something. Okay, so oh, coming in, whatever. coming in quick. We've coming got in hot with a nat one. one. The twins <laughs> got a one twenty. Oh, there's there's a twenty. There's a roll off with the twins. Twenties. Right, quick roll off, roll off, roll off with the Artem twins. Cordelia. All right, Artem and Cordelia. Wait, I'm not a twin. Oh, sorry. My second one is a seventeen. Cordelia, here it comes. Oh, an eleven. Oh, <laughs> so, oh. Um, <laughs> Autumn wins that D uh, D twenty inspiration. Thank you very much, Pixie. Very much appreciated. Indeed. On top thank of you. that, as well, um, we've massive thank you to Aaron at Crack and Dice. He's also offered to give away two sets of dice. So, wow. um, oh, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up that now. So we'll also do that giveaway at the break as well. But on top of that, he would also like to give each one of the casts a set of dice as well. Oh, Which thank is you very extremely, much. I, I, extremely Does that kind. include the DM? No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I'll send you one of mine, Sean. <clears throat> thank you. One of mine. That's um, awesome. Thank you. So regarding yes, that, thank you. if you would like, the cast would like to send me their um, addresses at the end, and then I'll, I will send one message over so he doesn't get inundated by 500 people wanting free dice. So a this... massive, massive thank you. Um, Huge. 
it's it's amazing. Two, it's two sets and four to the DM. <gasps> yes. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I would you just also it, like buddy. to say, I love dice. <laughs> and, we're, and we're going to take them away. So that Thank when you we all roll very, very good much. on our Kraken dice, the DM can roll terrible on some other cheap dice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I'd also like to give a shout out just while we're here. Someone is out in our chat giving out subs. I've Hello, just seen as well. Um, wow. Yeah. Chris at Fable 42. Thank you very thank much, buddy. You. Much appreciated. Um, very, very, very generous of you. Thank you very, very much. Um, and now that Artem has won the I will get that day. giveaway up and running. Thank you very much, Bolitas. Uh, Artem. Uh, so that was a 23 on my investigation. Very good. Well, uh, the figure has a gold earring in his left ear. Um, and do you open the book? Uh, no, he's pretty respectful of other people's tomes. He's just doing a visual uh, inspection of it. Oh, okay. um, the 23, I'm going to say that that actually bleeds over a little bit into history. Um, you recognize this individual. Um, this is Mordenkainen, the fabled wizard of legend. What uh, do you many... think, Artem? Is, is it a journal or is it a spell book? Please tell me it's a journal. DM? Um, with an investigation? Without opening it, it is really hard to know what it is. It is a large tome. I, uh, you know, from past experiences, I know not to open books that aren't mine. So it'll probably be up to Corcoran to let you know what's what. But uh, I open it. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I, okay. Who said that? Missed it. I open it. Segment opens it. So as Artem is sort of looking at it and you know doing everything that you can do to a book other than opening it, you come over and you just <laughs> grab it from his hands and open it. And as you do, <clears throat> it falls open to a page that has uh, handwriting in it, notes written in the margins. Um, and you see one word. It says scepter. Can I just- Hey, there's a quickly. page here that looks important. Do you want this, Jester? Jester, not Jester. It's okay, I get it all the time. <laughs> Sorry, all can I time. just cut in quickly? Sadly, we can't do two giveaways at the same time because the same exclamation mark giveaway is conflicting with each other and you can't add two different ones. So um, shall we give it another sort of like 15 minutes? If you want to enter the giveaway for a leather bracer, custom made lawful stupid leather bracer, please exclamation mark giveaway now. Um, and then... We'll, we'll do, how, how long have we got till break, Sean? Sorry. Uh, about 45 minutes. Um, so what we do, we say 15 minutes, do this giveaway, and then I, I can start the next one. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. We'll, we'll come to a moment. Yeah. And in a moment, we'll wrap and shift. And okay. You could just do that quietly in the chat. Yes. I'll sort it. Thank you very, very much. No problem. Um, Scepter is what you have found. And as you are flipping well, through, um, you look, uh, it, it appears to be very dry, um, very technical. Uh, not, you, you sort of look through it, you, you realize uh, this, is, this book is by somebody, it appears to be um, a actual, uh, a published book, The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces, into which many notes have been written in the margins, like almost like a textbook or a school book. Um, um, and you can find on the back cover um, the name Fistandia, apparently is the owner of this book. Well, I don't think it's a spell book, but here, Artem, it seems like some reading you would enjoy. I, I, I mean, I, I guess, but it's not my book. Um, would he recognize Scepter as like a command word or a... Uh... It is written bold and underlined several times. Um, huh, um, scepter? Does your uncle own a scepter? The book, as you say the word scepter, you the you say scepter, 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 scepter. It sort of echoes in the room, and the book begins to glow with a blue purplish light, and you drop it instinctually, and it falls on the floor and flips all the way to the center page, it opens up, and as it does, light begins to emit from it. And you see it sort of creates a geometric shape in the middle of the room, about the size of a medium creature uh, in the shape of a rectangle. And then it coalesces into a glowing blue door. Oh, that's magnificent. Oh, 
Huh. Huh. So maybe the book wasn't a spell book, but there's obviously a spell on the book. Oh, I've seen this sort of thing. This is like one of those things. What do they call them? A, 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 a tiny hut door? Um, rope door? Can I do an arcana check on it, Sean? Sure. In a minute. Anybody trained in arcana can also. Can I assist? Yeah. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, well, I've got two rolls. Um, okay. Three rolls. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I rolled twice. Sorry. I'm telling you guys, I see this sort of thing all the time. Little dimension doors and portals. This one is a... Um... So with the highest roll of 17, Jexter does indeed have it. Um, it is a entrance to an extra dimensional space. Probably something commonly referred to as Mordenkainen's Magnificent Mansion. And the uh, homunculus there sort of goes, <laughs> Oh, this, this is one of those things where like you can walk in and there's like people wait on you. <sighs> like they bring you whatever you want. Does but it you try to take me back them, you to my temple them. then? You should actually have one of these, Sekhmet, I'm telling you. You should have one of these things, one of these places. You I, love it. I have one of those places. I just am choosing well, this not one to goes go with back you. there right now. Wherever you go, you can take it. You take the door with in. you. So are we going through the door? or? I mean, we didn't really get an invitation. <laughs> it's probably where Corcoran is. Let's just go. What do you think, Shane? I think we should go. Um, yeah. Let's let's see what's inside. Cordelia. Cordelia. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Through Cordelia, the door. Cordelia, <laughs> I'm certain. I was I'm too busy certain. on mod duties. I'm back. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm certain that Cordelia would want to go through the portal into Morden Kynan's uh, fancy mansion thing. Oh, heck I am yeah. certain Mira. that Cordelia would want to do it. Why not? Ex Let's go. Extends her hand to Artem. Um, what? okay. I guess we're going. <laughs> Belitus, go. what do you, oh, Belitus is busy. Yeah, Belitus is busy. I'm just sort of we'll still absentmindedly we'll chewing on a piece of lettuce, just like, yeah. <laughs> leave him <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> what are we I'm doing? Gonna do, yeah. I'm going to conjure some celery. Blow his mind. Great. It's fine. I'll, 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 I'll help. I'll like guide him with lettuce, like through the portal, <laughs> like kind of like holding it behind me, like, come on. He sort of does that. <laughs> 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 the turtles too. Oh, we're gonna have a lot of turtle jokes. Okay. <gasps> um, do you all enter? I think we should bring the familiar. He's gonna want to see him again, right? Will Will the Will the little him. creepy dude come with us? He's sort of standing by the portal, going. <laughs> come here, boy. Come here, boy. Come here. Oh, these things make a um. Persuasion check, please. I can do that. Can Zelmira <laughs> just grab the little thing and go through the portal with it? Well, we'll ah. see. Oh, with a 20. Start of ah. cups to walk towards you. Uh, Jesker um, appears to be coming towards to go into the portal. Way to go, Jexter. <laughs> just a, a quick question. Our uh, horses and, and, and such, our mounts, they are still in the stables, right? They are indeed. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Would it be safe to assume anything that I know you said anything you would need like battle wise, but would it be safe to assume anything on them we would have? Yes. Uh, Great. Rather than go through the minutia of what is yeah. actually stored on the horse, anything that you would think I need to have this with me cool. in, for safekeeping um, is on you, and everything that you Perfect. would need, such as a you know uh, yes. glass blower's kit. Exactly. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh no, the glass blower's kit. Is there a way that I can just gently take that out of his bag and like drag? I'm him? certain that she wanted to show it off to all of us. I am certain. I just want to push it away, <laughs> just move it away. All right. So as you step into the portal, there is a slight tickling sensation that starts in the extremities of your fingertips and your toes. Um, and a slight sense of nausea as 
you begin to feel yourself sort of falling forward. And this blue sort of purple light begins to fill your entire field of vision as you are moving through some sort of space. And before you even have a chance to take a breath or even wonder if there is air there, you find yourself <laughs> stepping into a very well-lit marble vestibule. Behind you are two um, white uh, wooden doors that are uh, have golden uh, fixtures that are standing slightly ajar. The floor is a uh, beautiful marble with sort of a deep burgundy um, in um, striations of color moving through it. Um, and in, right here in this uh, vestibule, stepping out about uh, ten feet, you look. You can see stretching along the uh, along to either side in front of this vestibule is a corridor going about um, uh, 60 feet uh, in either direction. And directly in front of the door is another door, which is slightly ajar. Um, and just looking in it, you can see there appears to be um, books on a shelf inside of it. Um, it is not cold. It is not hot. It is very comfortable. The air smells slightly of lemons. Ekman has a brief moment of excitement, wondering if, if this is the heavens where she's meant to be at first, because this is exactly how she's envisioned it. But she keeps that to herself. What do you do, my friends? Hello! Uh, are there any servants Shit. around? Uh, make a perception check, Jessica. Oh, I know they're <laughs> around. They're always around. 15 perception check. You don't see anything that could be classified as a servant. You just see your party. However, with the 15, you do hear. That's unpleasant. Belitus, wake Oh, it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the homunculus sort of go. It begins to scamper forward. It leaps into the air. Its wings as it flies through the open door and pushes it open, revealing a library. Oh, hey. No, no, Artem, no, it's not real. It's not real. Of course it's real. It's, it's not, not real. real. It's not real. No, it's real. Um, so uh, this library is about uh, 15 by 15 feet. Um, and it has along the back shelf, uh, three large bookcases um, filled with books. Um, one of the shelves is conspicuously empty. Um, there is a large bearskin rug on the floor and there are two overstuffed red leather chairs. Um, next to each of them um, are little tables that have more books piled upon them. Um, and you also see a orange cat that sort of stretches and yawns and begins to sort of pad towards you and bunts and rubs up against Sekhmet very strongly, its tail mm. straight up in the air as it moves past her and into the hall and begins to move uh, down the hall um, away from the main entrance. Oh. And... Sitting upon one of the chairs is a diminutive figure, uh, a shock of white hair, like a, sort of like an explosion of pulled cotton on his head, bald pate, and a huge beard and mustache. Now, the bottom of the beard appears to be dark, either with dirt or ink. He's wearing a, a brown robe, and there's a staff next to him made of uh, oak, the top of which appears to be in a... a a, uh, a tree, a sapling at one point that was uprooted and then turned upside down. So the root system is actually forms the top of the staff. Um, and the tree that the sapling was appeared to have actually grown th through the skull of some sort of odd creature with fangs and horns, which is flipped upside down. So its teeth are facing in the same direction as all of the roots. And hanging from this, uh, these teeth are numerous little strings and chains with all sorts of little baubles of glass and bone and some gems and sitting in this chair with a, uh, a book in his hand, um, just 
completely asleep and unaware of your presence is this gnome that you know, Jesker, to be Corcoran Pebblemoss. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of inch over to him and reach way out and nudge him. Nudge. Another five minutes. Corcoran. He said five minutes. Let's give him five Corcoran Pebblemoss. What? Kipper wants you. He raises Kipper. one eyebrow. His, his eyebrow actually creeps up almost all the way up his uh, bald pate, going very large. He's a gnome. And he sort of looks at you, blinks his eyes. He says, I, I, I know you. What, what, yes. Where am I? What is happening? I, oh, this is, I, oh, I do beg your pardon. <laughs> and sits up and stands up and he's about three and a half feet tall and sort of <clears throat> dusts off his uh, uh, robe and grabs his staff and looks at you all and says, hello. Hi, Corcoran. Kip, I um, was looking for you. We found a book in your room um it wasn't that book you were telling the story about uh, last week the the one about the demons and the that one uh, but, oh you've read my book i'm not demons devil is a very important distinction young man are you horrible aren't you yes yes um Oh, well, yes. Well, um, Corcoran Pebblemoss, uh, High Priest of Agba. Um, I am uh, um, at your service. <laughs> Who are you all? And where in the hell am I? Well, we, you're in your little room, and this is my retinue. Just kidding, guys. They keep me out of trouble. Um, we're his protectors. I need Yes, it. we are. My name is Shamsiel. Um, but most people have trouble saying that. And instead of saying shame, which would kind of not be very nice, they I tell people to call me Shane. That's nice. Oh, that's clever. Yes. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, well, I am Zelmira, and this is my brother, Arden. How do you do? How do you do? Quite well. Oh, um, I, uh, mm, I, um, and this, I do this... beg your pardon. It's most embarrassing. Um, this, this is my friend Cordy. Um, How do you she's, do? She's yeah. nice. She doesn't smile as much, but but she's nice. So. Very well. Don't mess with her. Oh no, no, I wouldn't think of it. Uh, do you uh, do you not know my name? Um, no, give me a moment. I, um, let's see. I know you. No, I don't believe we've ever met. Therefore, I don't think there's any way I could possibly know your name. Again. Did you know mine before I introduced myself? Salmira. Well, so, <laughs> He did actually. Uh oh, Ar Artem is going to uh, Artem is going to stand quietly behind Sekhmet, and with his uh, digits, he's going to extend the tips of his digits, and they're going to spell out mechanically Sekhmet. And he's just going to wave his fingers quietly, and then have them <laughs> draw back. Uh, Zelmira rolls her eyes while this is. I am the goddess of the Sekhmet? sun. The deity of protection and war. I am the daughter of Ra. Um, how do you do? And he bows very deeply. Um, and uh, you, uh, young fellow. And he looks over at you, Belitis. Uh, Belitis bows as well. To... Uh, yes, uh, uh, I am Belitis. Really nice, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you as well. Um, oh, and here's Coriander. Um, and the homunculus sort of comes over <laughs> and begins to look at him. He says, um, Corcoran nods. says, goodness heavens, it's what time? I'm, uh, I'm supposed to have dinner with Kipper. Uh, um, oh, this is... Uh, um, I think you're late, Corcoran. I am most assuredly late. I, uh, this is a bit of a uh, problem. I, I must leave immediately, but... Uh, this is such a fascinating thing. My, uh, this book was sent to me by an old friend, Fistandia. I, uh, I'm, I have uh, no idea why I came in here. It was just such a lovely spot. I thought I would uh, sit in and read uh, this book here. And, uh, it's good. It's a page turner. <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, he picks up the book and holds it in his hand and says, um, but I really, I, 
this, I don't suppose, I, Jessica Harper, it would be a, a great favor to an old man if you and your uh, companions would uh, um, just look about this place. Uh, my goodness, if it's been in existence for this long, I don't think it's going anywhere. And uh, as long as the door remains open, uh, it should still be accessible from the outside. So uh, if you would be so kind as to just uh, poke around a bit, uh, I would appreciate it. Part of his eyes just explode with excitement. Go ahead, Artem. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Be right back. And he just hops in. I guess uh, everybody uh, mingle? Uh, I, I mm, sort of looks at you all with a very calculating gaze and sort of this, for a brief moment, this sort of uh, befuddled man uh, be- has, takes on a very shrewd look and looks at you. You all look quite capable. Probably looks yes. at Belitus and he picks a mushroom out and just slowly eats it. Mm. Cochran raises an eyebrow at that. Well, they, um, they really are quite good, Corcoran. I, well, I, I will that, um, take your word for it, Jessica. They're really quite good. Um, they really are. Uh, we've traveled far and wide. We've gone far away from this place. <laughs> and they make me come back. But um, it's, it's really... what? Why does it matter? Well, um, well, I haven't heard from Fistandia in quite some time, and to receive this book out of the blue, it's, uh, it's a bit of a mystery. I, uh, Isn't that how wizards do things? Uh, well, more often than not, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth finding out what happened. Um, or if anything happened, um, I, will, I will offer one word of caution. Uh, Fistandia was, was one for experiments. <laughs> and, uh, well, if she has left them unattended then well, there could be some danger. But as I said, you all are capable. Just keep your wits about you. And uh, of course, if it gets too dangerous, you can always just run out the door. Um, and then, well, I don't think anything so will be able to follow you. You're saying magic and creatures and things? Uh, the general sort of. Oh, she didn't things. help you write that devil book about well, in point of fact, she did. You have read my book. <laughs> no, yes. you told everyone in the tavern about it for 14 hours straight, Corcoran. Yes, uh, I highly recommend it. It's uh, a real page turner. Oh, everyone, everyone, listen. What's the name of the book? Um, Plumbing the Gates of Hell, uh, a comprehensive treatise on the biological and reproductional practices of the devilish cousins it's what it sounds like yeah, it's oh. exactly what it sounds like that's the title yes Do you have about shortening it well it's more of a scholarly work it, the, those types tend to well we we'll get into it later i i look forward to many uh, a conversation about what you find here hey uh, i i i must go i uh, can't keep keep her waiting much longer i uh, he's a terrible temper um so just take a take a little time an hour or two look around make sure there's nothing greatly amiss and um then leave and uh, your... I will find you back in the fuzzy quarter staff uh, post haste. I, I don't want to keep you from dinner, but is your book about the devilish cousins here in this library? I, I highly doubt it. Oh. It's but it's I can provide a they... copy for you if you are really interested. Oh, Selmer, yeah. it's about how devils. <clears throat> I understand. I just wanted to know where it was so I could oh. avoid it. it uh, there's at least two more libraries that I was able to find every day. Mm. So maybe there, maybe it's here. I don't know. Sure, I'm, great. Thank, thank. Enjoy your dinner. Oh, thank nice you. To meet I, you. I shall. Um, yes. Um, and uh, oh, um, if if there's some sort of fee involved, I am happy to see to it. There is a fee. Ah, well, we could discuss that when we see each other again. Uh, 
Very well. Uh, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Come, Coriander. And Coriander sort of flies up and lands on his head. And um, Corcoran begins to walk out the uh, the door. Looks back and says, I remember. Might be some danger. Hmm? Be careful. He steps through the door. And as he does, you hear, Open oh, some and the door slams shut. Oh. Is that normal? It is. Every time he does things like that, he always yells about it, this and Ogma that. It's, it's, it's like a thing. Oh. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. I, 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 uh, Shane I, I, will open the door and try and look. The door does not open. Bane? It is locked. Can you open um, the door? Uh... Maybe I'm gonna kind of lean my shoulder against it. Cordelia will attempt to assist in this because she wants to get out. All right, make a strength. <laughs> uh, roll a just a straight strength check. Okay. Cordelia is like, bye. Uh, does the assistance count or not? It, it does. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, I have double eights. <laughs> so. What it about Artem's mechanical arm? That's like, okay. Cordelia had a 13. But she gave uh, yeah, uh, assistance I, yeah. to uh, Shane. So uh, the double eight stand. Oh. It is like pushing oh, against God. a mountain. Shane, you still haven't figured out how doors work, have you, you dear boy? Uh, um, if it's not glass, maybe Dexter. you can blow it down. Artem, would Artem recognize the predicament that they are in at the moment? Uh, you can make an arcana chain. Yeah. That's an 11. Um, difficult to know exactly what's happened. Um, the, the fact that there was a password involved in entering might suggest that there is a password involved in exiting as well. Uh, huh, guys, I think we might be a little stuck. We're not stuck. Don't worry, friends. Look, if you just rely on me and trust in me, I can help protect you and get you through this. Have you been in this situation before, Jexter? You you said it's regular. Is this part regular? I mean, there was the one time in wizard school where they sent me into one of these places and they didn't let me out for a few days, but... Um... And they let you out. You did not yeah. escape of... Okay. Yeah. He said we had the freedom to roam the place. A book got us in. A book will probably get us out. That's right. a good point, segment. You will put yourselves on the map hereabouts. Sure. What's happening? Yeah, your, your, your face. Chroma keys eating your, your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's body horror suddenly. We didn't know. Weird. <laughs> Why would that happen? Slight Borgish like, going on. I like I it. I'm going to keep it. Skin off. Should, uh, should we do a giveaway quickly? Sure. <laughs> okay. You've got until I get to the next screen. So exclamation mark giveaway to win a leather bracer. And then after that, I'm going to do a giveaway for four sets of Kraken dice to two lucky winners. So That's we'll, so awesome. And thanks we for will, uh, and Thanks amazing. for everybody out there Super watching. Cool. Um, Thank we're, we're, you. We're so currently nice. running over 60, Sean. Woo! So wow. it's uh, it's nice to see everybody out there and, and hope everybody's enjoying this. This is a little bit of a an interesting kickoff for us. We're all in these characters for the very first time tonight. Sean, wow. that is not what you're trying to do. That's, that's nope. Not, <laughs> it's not helping. Not <laughs> helping at all. Whatever that right. was, that was not 30 seconds. 30 seconds. If you want to enter, quick, enter. Oh, there's a Exclamation mark giveaway. Cat. Staff. Uh, staff uh, cast Cat. are more than welcome to enter as well so please jump in uh, Ted I have no idea what has changed in the last few moments to cause this problem <laughs> you look like just, you've been uh, assimilated yeah it's there right. you go Sean perfect we are that. closing entry Carl Gray Squirrel got in lucky oh. let's see if he wins it right oh. three two one let's pick a winner uh, 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 it, it. Hey! Oh, hey! That's awesome! Emmeline790. Wow. Yeah. If Elena is in chat, let me know. Uh, we know where she What's is. Up? I can complete that anyway. Right, I am going to open up this awesome crack and dice giveaway thank you very much to them as well we will draw, draw that um, when we come back from a break So, which is not going to be yet so 
No, so it's not go. quite time for that. But not, not time uh, for that. Again, no. While, while while that's being set up and while we're transitioning and while uh, the very important person Zalmira is away for just a moment. Uh, again, everybody out there watching, thanks very much for coming and watching us. This is Trapped at Home, Descendants of Avernus. Indeed. Our very own DM, medium, medium rare. He's ready to go. <laughs> and uh, Medium-sized man, creature. It's, just, it's nice to see Corcoran again. We haven't seen him in I a while. I missed him Corcoran so Pebble much. <laughs> it's nice to bring back reoccurring characters. But, um, so uh, we are missing uh, for the time being our player is Elmira, but uh, she does have her token on the board. So uh, if the rest of you could follow suit, uh, the I DM cannot, would appreciate it. I cannot get mine to... Oh dear. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, Sean. Um, I will see to that. There's always one. Uh, oh, more like two, because I can't get by neither. Oh no! <laughs> We'll do a quick check. It's interesting for us. I think I was able to get mine. It's interesting for us because, uh, you know, we've been adventuring for a while together as characters. Try now. And we're still learning about each other. Uh, Shane, I know you're not dumb. <laughs> Cordelia. But I can wish that you were. That's, uh, I don't, I don't really know how to respond to that. <laughs> So, um, can you try again there, Arjun? Success! And then can you try again there, Cordelia? I will give it a go. Cordelia Tisbell. Yep, there you are. Artem, can you move your token to the side? I'm noticing that Zelmira's token does not have the name under it. Is it perhaps mm. not under her control at all? You may want to check that. Well, she, since she was able to pull it out, it must be under her control, but I think I can fix that problem. Well, there she is. If she can reach into roll 20 and touch her very token right there in the middle, then we will know. All I have well, to do is click that right there. Threat. That should take care of it. And Zelmira, are you able to negotiate your token around the board? Let me check on that. New campaign, who dis? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is too real. I am, yes. I have oh, been right. in, awesome. I spent most of today in a car, and I'm not even kidding, my friend sat nav sounded exactly like that. Like, let me check <laughs> on this. I was like, <laughs> what? Freaked me out, scared me. Sorry. All right, friends. Uh, so, to your south is the door that you are unsuccessfully trying to open. Uh, to your north is this library. Um, the center bookshelf, um, the top shelf of it is completely bare. Um, and uh, the cat that you saw walked out, rubbed up against Sekhmet and went into this room, uh, putting its paw on the door. The door opened and sh sh swung shut. Um. You Shane would like to step um, up on a little uh, stool, pull over a chair or something, and if if he can't reach, but fully look on this top shelf, and just look around and see if there's a reason um, for it being empty, or see if there's, uh, yeah, something amiss, and try and just to look for something out of place. Very good. Please make an investigation check. Oh, I tried to phrase it as perception. Okay. Uh, well, I will tell you what you can see, which is an right. empty bookshelf. It's an empty bookshelf. Uh, I've got a six. A six. Um, it's difficult to know how long it's been empty. Um, it is conspicuously empty because every single other shelf in the room is full of books. There are even books um, and notes and journals and such on the tables. And if I push like the back panel, does it do anything? Just push nope. it? Okay. It is oh. solid. Oh, shit. Uh May I? Huh. Uh, and, uh, oh, yes. go ahead. <laughs> you may. Um, his arm uh, carries, his arm kind of disjoints at the wrist, and there is like a sort of like one of those like grabby claw extenders <coughs> uh, retracts from his arm, and his hand uh, extends up and does an investigation of the empty shelf. Very well. Please roll an investigation check. Uh, 28. 28. Well, you 
easily discover that there is a book on the shelf here that is not a book um, that is actually a lever. Um, and this shelf, this bookshelf, doubles as a door. Oh, uh... Did you find anything? Yeah, um, hang on. And he gives it a little tug. It opens up and reveals behind it a staircase descending down. Um, Shane, uh, you, in the process of looking at this bookshelf and looking around, I will allow you to roll a perception check to see what else could be of interest just lying about. Oh, sure. Um... 17. 17. So just looking at the spines of these books, um, it appears that most of them have been written by somebody named Fistandia. Um, you uh, would need to roll an investigation or spend some time uh, looking through all of this material in order to um, learn more. However, um, on one of the, uh, on one of the, um, uh, tables here, the fact this one to the uh, next to the chair to the north, there is a book that is not like any of the others. It is large, it is black and embossed with gold, and there is a sort of plate on the front of it with a sort of a familiar looking visage of Mordenkainen. And on its spine, there is no um, title. There is only the letter I. Okay, you will pick it up and kind of look at it. Um, what's the cover made of? Uh, leather. Leather kind and of some sort of shiny it. metal. Uh, could be bronze, could be um, brass. Hey, Artie, um, this, first of all, this isn't this kind of weird that, I mean, in your library, you know, have you, have you written any books? Uh, I mean, I journal, but I haven't yeah. written anything that other people have read. <laughs> Most people, though, would fill a library with other people's books, right? Because you know all this stuff that you wrote, right? I mean, anyway, that's weird to me. But I, oh. this one isn't. This one's different. Look, and he hands the book to Artem. Uh, he will look at it uh, or investigate it. I, I suppose. Right. Different well, check. Investigation, please. I want to keep the twenty-eight. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. You immediately realize that this is not actually a book. This is a book-shaped object. It does not open. The pages are glued together. It is simply a, for want of a better term, an art piece that happens to look like a book. Hmm. Um, is there, is it, it's completely solid? Nothing? Yes, I mean, it, it, the, the pages are made of paper and all, it, you know, looking at it and sort of feeling it, it feels about the right size and weight of a book of uh, the outside is leather. Um, the clasp and the um, bindings of it and the embossery is metal, um, but it is, you can't open it. It does not. And with your uh, eight, with your 17, you realize that even if you could open it, there would not be anything in it. It is not a book. What is the, the eye? Is that just what's written on the spine? You large said? metal eye written in common. Hmm. Does that look like uh, does the eye itself look like an individual letter that would fit in place with anything else on the bookshelves? Uh, with a 17, the size 18. of this, uh, 18, sorry, with an 18, the size of this book does correspond very snugly to the size of the shelf that is empty. Guys, we have to, oh, I, I think I might, maybe we have to, I, I'm gonna need to help with this because we have to spell something here, probably. It's good, like a, one of those wizard puzzles, right? Look for more odd books. Let's look for some more books. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we do. We hunt. Yeah, we uh, look all for right. books. So as you uh, realize that that is what this is about, allow me. Uh, you see a, uh, obviously, this door that leads to the staircase going down. Um, and you see a door here, a door here, a door at the end of the hall there. Last one to find a book door. has to do watch with Jexter. A door. Zelmira <laughs> begins searching frantically. Zelmira <laughs> <laughs> has never moved more fast in her life. Um, Same wave like. Boletus is panicking because he only moves really slow. <laughs> Boletus, from where you are standing, you see another uh, marble staircase um, that leads up. So. Where would you like to look? 
uh, Artem will scour the bookshelves that are not empty. Um, so looking around here, based on your other checks, you feel like you could probably find out more information, but it's not going to be something that you can do instantly. You're going to need to take some time. Oh, um, I meant for books that have that letter, like similar oh, to the letter. I see. Uh, with the other uh, rolls that you have made, it is immediately apparent that in this room, at least on the bookshelves, there are definitely no other books that even come close to looking like this. Thelmira looks to Artem and Shane and says, well, um, I'm going to go see if there's any other rooms that I can explore. Does anyone want to come, Artem? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and I, uh, Zamir will head towards the stairs going up. All righty. I'll head toward the stairs going down. Oh, Please. I never spoke. Okay. <laughs> Shane. Or, uh, I, I think maybe, going maybe we should or... stick with, maybe we should stick with Mira, guys. Um, uh. As, I just have a feeling about it. Shane, um, as you see the two different people moving in two different ways, the, the echoes of Corcoran's words that could be dangerous. Uh, I, think, uh, I think she might be right. So let's 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 stick with her. Where, where shall I go, Shane? Um, Come just, with me. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, stick before, with him all, uh, um, Just keep an eye out. Before Artem and, and that leave, uh, Cordelia is going to reach over and, and tap Artem on the shoulder and just say, you got this. If anyone can find a book, it's you. And I'm going to cast Guidance. All right, so uh, you are concentrating on Guidance, um, and uh, it lasts for, is this one the 10 minutes, or is that uh, Bardic Inspiration? I can never one remember. Minute. Uh, one minute. Um, one minute. Okay. One minute. So you're concentrating for the next minute. You Artem, can do five. this. One Six minute. Six seconds is a long, long time. Indeed it is. <laughs> So I keep telling my wife that, so... <laughs> I, I was actually referring to the Chorus of Straw song. Yeah, da, 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 uh, everybody da. go onto YouTube and look up Chorus <laughs> of Straw. Please, uh, please look up the Chorus of Straw Supercut so you can see uh, our very own our very own Ryan uh, singing uh, Six Seconds is a Long, Long Time. It's, 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 it's about fighting. It's about rounds. It's about rounds and D&D. Oh, and why Jade has so many kids. <laughs> a long, now, long time. <laughs> now knowing it's a minute, uh, Cordelia will say what she said prior, hand on the shoulder, and the slight smile will turn to a deadpan face. You have 60 seconds. Okay, okay, <laughs> I can do it. Uh, and he will uh, immediately trail behind Selmira to go up the stairs. Okay. Don't uh, let is me it, down. Is everybody going up the steps? Yeah. So clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. Up you go, all following Zelmira uh, to the second level. Um, if you will sort of, I'm going to create a pathway through the uh, the mists here that will lead you to the staircase that goes up to the second level of this mansion. You find yourself um, as you come up these steps uh, in a hallway that goes both to the east and to the south. In the north western corner, uh, there is a suit of armor that is obviously uh, um, ornamental. Um, and uh, there is a door to your east. Erg. Come on, mouse. Thank you. Door to your east. There is a door here and there is a door here. Are they open or shut? Sean? They are all shut. Uh, you pointed out doors. There's. Yeah, there, did you, you see there were them? three? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so uh, I will make them a little bit more obvious with my revealing a door there, there, and there. And now I will ping. Ping! 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 <laughs> Feeling the. Uh, ah. The, the challenge of Cordelia, um, he's throwing caution to the wind. He opens this, Artem will open this door here to the south and this one to the east. Uh, and he will send Jade to scout in the east room while he looks in this room here. It's a confusing name you chose for your I know. Your I looked familiar. up. I looked also, up. I was like, what? Yeah. Uh, Zelmira, kind of in a moment of twin synergy. <laughs> Twinergy makes eye contact with Artem and 
follows Jade into the opposite room. Alrighty. Uh, the opposite room, which is the east the room. The room for, yeah, east. Okay, so um, first things first, the south south room, you open it up and it is a trophy room. There, the uh, uh, floor of this room, whereas the, the, the bottom level was uh, this marble um, that just extend everywhere you looked on the hallway in that room was all this uh, sort of light marble with the dark burgundy striations. This floor um, is made of a very um, well-polished and um, yellowish wood. Um, with a heavy sheen. Um, the um, the room that you open is a trophy room. I'll directly across from the uh, door is a fireplace with a merry little fire burning, um, crackling. Um, and on the wall, you see to one side, the head of a large uh, elk, and then directly across it, uh, about the same size as an elk, but very different, um, a wyvern or dragon or drake-like creature, both of them hanging on the wall. Each corner of the room has another one of these large overstuffed red leather armchairs. And on the floor is a large dark carpet with a sigil of a flying dragon upon it. Um, and uh, again, books everywhere. Over the mantelpiece of the um, uh, fireplace are two crossed Rapier swords. Um, the first thing he's going to do is look over the books. So uh, while I have, let's see, describe this, I'm going to now reveal it. And now since Zelmira stated that she opened the other door, I will describe it to her uh, and to anybody else who cares to listen. Uh, this is obviously a master bedroom. You put your hand on the door and it opens up, um, but it is very airy and sparse. There is a, a door um, that is on the opposite wall. And in the bottom corner, there is a large canopy bed um, and there is a simple uh, a dresser, uh, top which is a basin and a uh, large silver pitcher. Um, and there is a large oil painting of a dragon perched atop a mountain um, on the northern wall. And that is what you see. Delmira enters the room and is immediately attracted to the giant oil painting. And she's kind of into the feeling of things, the tactile nature. So she looks like she thinks it looks like it has some interesting textures. So she goes and she puts a hand on it and investigates it. All right. So as you're about to step into the room, you hear and creeping from the bed, you see another cat, this one white. And it um, appears here and sort of makes its way towards you, um, sort of stretches, comes over towards you and sits moving in this way to you here and looks up at you. Zalmira looks down, uh, reaches down and scratches behind the cat's ears. Make an animal handling check. <laughs> well, this could go south real fast. I, I have to say, I think that Sekhmet should get advantage on all these handling checks with cats. Can I hear uh, it now from the hall? Not yet. Uh, what is your passive? Me? Push. Yeah. Second. Question is, would it be animal handling or just charisma? Right. It's animal handling. Oh. I rolled a 14. A 14 is enough. <laughs> sort of rubs up against you and bunts you and then sort of walks past you, looking at the rest of the group as she sort of sits placidly looking at you and then makes her way down the steps. Cool. So that being said, can I go um, explore the, or investigate the painting? Indeed. Uh, we will get to that in a moment. Let us Excellent. first discuss what the rest of you do. What, what passive did you want? Oh, Zamira, I moved you instead of the cat. I do apologize. <laughs> uh, let's Classic. try that again. Uh, just a quick question. Is Jexter coming with us at all? 
Or is he just waiting in the... I don't know. I'm, I'm coming slowly. Okay. Cordelia um, would have probably... She would want to have kept up with Shane, but then kind of remembering the past, you know, would be trying to stick close to Jess, you know, to make sure that he's okay um, and, like, safe. So right. she would probably be more over here, actually. Like so straight. regardless, uh, Sekhmet, um, regardless of whether or not you heard the meow, you certainly see the cat as it comes walking down. It's a beautiful white Persian cat just... <laughs> And again, it sort of snakes its way and rubs up against you and a couple times before continuing down the steps. I give it like a little prayer blessing as it goes on its way. Very nice. Artem, what are you doing and what are the rest of you doing? Are you, I see not everybody gathered together. Is this, is this the deportment that you wish or? Okay, so Shemshel is there, Bolitas is there, Sekhmet there, and Jessica there and Cordelia. Are you on the steps or are you in the... I would be uh, behind Jess. Okay. Or Jex, um, sorry. <laughs> Shane will always okay. be kind of moving and looking, kind of has his head on a swivel and as much as he can, it seems like he's trying to keep everyone he can in view of him. He's looking around for the books a little bit, but mostly looking at his companions. And every time he comes into a room, you can kind of see him check the door, look, in, look his eyes look to the corners, to the windows, and then just kind of scan and smile. So that's an interesting point very quickly here. So far, you've only seen one window and it is this right here at the top of the steps. Looking out it, you see swirling purple, miasmic haze and that is all and apt uh, um apt in art artem as you are uh looking you sort of look around this room you hear a cry from the bedroom zelmira i was watching your path um Bo bolitas if you can put yourself back by the door Zelmira, you crossed this square right here to get to the door, and as you did, there is a sudden red glow from the floor. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. You got this, monk. You are also muted. <laughs> She's like, I got it, I got it. It was a silent spell in the room. Oh, oh dear. What did you roll there, Zelmira? <laughs> The fun thing about that is I have a plus six modifier, but I rolled a two, so I ended oh. up with an eight. So <laughs> Back Belitis, to you, DM. You, you look as Zamira <laughs> creeps in very quietly, just sort of very gracefully looks around and she steps onto the uh, uh, section of the floor, very close to the middle of the room, and she looks down and you see her look up with her eyes wide and there's a red and she disappears. <gasps> in a blast of red light. Bye. And That's the campaign. <laughs> I do believe that will be where we take our little pausa here. Sweet. So, Zelmira, you have disappeared. Belitis, what do you do? If you have the time to discuss. Are you too busy? Um, I will... Uh, 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 I'll look behind me and see uh, Shane. Uh, Zamira, she's, 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 she's gone. I, I see that. We need to go after her. Where'd she go? I guess Wait, I saw it too, shot? so... Yeah, you would have um, seen it as well. She, she, she was just there. C could I do an Arcana check on it? Sure. Roll Arcana. Being where I am, can I overhear them talking about her disappearing? Uh, yeah, uh, there's uh, a, a sort of a... And then you hear um, the sounds of alarm as people, and yes, uh, you, the entire group is now aware that this happened. Um, Boletus within 19, I kind of, this was uh, some sort of teleportation spell. Um, oh. No idea where to. Picks up some of the dust. And uh, I will say with the arcana, you are aware, looking down that this, is encompassing those, these two squares directly in front of the um, the painting. Oh, oh, it's still active and I just walk in it. If it's still active. <laughs> right. As you, okay. <laughs> you disappear as well. Sally, Sally, 
uh, I will immediately uh, go to the glyph and see if I can uh, determine maybe where she went from the- uh, Make an arcana check. All right. Based on what's happened, Shane would start running for the that as well. Uh, 15 for me. 15. Um, you realize that this is um, 15. It is difficult to know the destination, um, but you don't think it was far. Um, I start just, I, I'm, I'm panicked, so I start like calling out for her and. Uh, All right. Boletus, you find yourself floating in a purple haze of cloud. Um, you look down at your hands, you can barely see them. Um, and you can see no sign of Zelmira. Zelmira, you suddenly find yourself just floating in space and the all you can see around you is um, fairly, uh, uh, slightly illuminated a miasma of swirling purple mist. You can see nothing else. And as you have been here for slightly longer than Belitis, it's beginning to take a toll. You feel as if you're being stretched, as if whatever this is, is not meant for mortal flesh to be in contact with. Don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Um, well, uh, I guess I try to call out. All right, what do you say? Hello, is is anyone there? All right, Belitis, what is your passive? My passive is 16, I believe. 16, uh, with a 16, you hear, hello? Hello? Is anyone there? Sounds like uh, Zelmira. That's so creepy. Zelmira, <laughs> uh, my dear, is that you? Zelmira, what is your passive? Nothing impressive, a 13. <laughs> 13 is enough. You hear, <laughs> Zelmira. <laughs> You. I call to know. back out. I feel I feel bad making you do this over. It's all right. I'm not going to keep doing it. I was like, whoa, this is a commitment. So, so, so call, uh, you call I, out and you two begin now that you know what to listen for. You you hear it, but it's very difficult to get a spatial sense of where the sound is coming from. It could be close, it could be far. Um, sometimes it sounds like it's right in front of you. Sometimes it sounds like it's impossibly distant. Um, I will need perception checks for you to figure out where you are. I see a, well, could you call out what you roll, please? Roll the 12. 12. A natural one. Natural one. So, Belitis, you have no idea. You're just floating, and as you're looking around, you've been, you feel like you your orientation might be turning you oh, on your no, back, but no, no. is it your back? It might be that you're turning on to your front. It's becoming very difficult to determine what is up and what is down. Uh, Zelmira, you see a dark, slightly darker shape in this uh, purple haze. Um, it's the only thing that is different from the swirling mist that you've seen. It's a, it's a very noticeably noticeable section of this mist that is darker than the rest. And it's very close. So think. I am going to call out once again to Belitis, and I'm going to say, I think that I see something and I'm going to move towards it. Stay where you are. <sighs> something. I'll say we are. And um, I go towards it. How? Bleats will go right, inside so, his shell. <laughs> so, 
Zamira will, I guess since I just imagine myself almost, it's like swimming through jello. Right. So I guess swimming in whatever way I can go, whatever locomotion I can take. That is so what I you, you move your arms and there's, there's no give. I mean, there's no resistance. There's nothing to push against you. You aren't moving and you think, I just need to move forward. And as soon as the thought coalesces in your mind, you begin to move oh, towards this. Interesting. And after about five feet, you run into um, the form of Belitus, and you can see him, but again, very indistinct. Um, it's as if there is a very, very heavy fog just right up all around you, and you have to bring your fingers up within six inches of your face to even see them. Kush. Kadunk. <laughs> uh, she knocks on the outside of his shell, <laughs> hoping, praying she's not hitting him on the stomach, but hoping that she's knocking on the outside of the shell. Belitus, it's me. Uh, what's the password, my dear? Uh, Belitus, it's me. <laughs> oh, that was correct. And he pops out. <laughs> nice. So uh, the two of you have found one another, but you have no idea where you are. And Zelmira, now Belitus, you're beginning to feel very unwell. Oh, Starting to feel undown. You, you will run down. You've you've been out here about a minute, and you're just starting to oh, really sort of start to feel. And you look at your fingers and. You have the horrible sensation that when you, you look at your fingers, it's not actually fog in between you and your fingers. It's your fingers themselves that are actually becoming more indistinct. Oh, oh that's unique. <laughs> Back to the rest of you. What do you do? Um, I want to kind of just step in. I want to attempt. Uh, to cast message at the spot they disappeared. All right, so you don't actually have to cast on a spot. You just have to cast it to someone you are familiar with. Yeah, uh, attempt that. You have to. Um, you have to cast it in the direction, as I believe, in the direction that they are. Uh, you have to be facing where you think they are, mm -hmm. and cast that. And then, if they're within range, they will receive it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one long message, which they can then reply to. Uh, but if you stop speaking, then you have to cast it again. Oh, okay. So what direction do you choose? The direction-ish that they disappeared. <laughs> well, they disappeared from a fixed point. You have no idea where they showed up. Do you, do you face to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south? Where I do you face, think they might be? Well, like walking into the room, I'm like facing into the room. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, I mean, kind of like exactly where my character's looking on the token. So from my, from my perspective, point. it looks like you're looking south. Is that where okay. you want to cast? I, is there a compass on this thing? No, you just need to okay. tell me where you're cast. <laughs> just tell me what direction you're <laughs> facing when you cast. North, south. East, west, south, east. Southeast. Okay. Um, so uh, I believe the component is a so piece kind of, of like wire. In the air that direction, just pointing to... So, I, I apologize, Sekhmet, that no, direction does not translate over Zoom. You need to give me cardinal directions. <laughs> 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 which way you want to point, which way you want to cast. Oh, Zoom. Um, yeah, just kind of like in the air. Like, I'm not, I'm not entering the room any farther than where I am. Okay. So I'm just from there holding my... Arm is very distracting over here. Arm straight out pointing and you're southeast. casting to the southeast okay ish i mean but so, i'm like so my, my distance my gaze isn't that far out it's to a spot and like does that make sense like a spot in the room um like my view is like if my hand was center of the room yeah yeah thanks <laughs> good with so words. this way no this way yeah that but way. like okay. yeah all right, so you send out the message. There's no response. You don't know if that means that they're dead or if they're not in that direction. I try one more time. Which way? <laughs> Same direction. <laughs> Same direction. 
Once again, <laughs> no response. Right. So as segment, what do you say? Salmyra, Belitus, where are you? <laughs> okay. Um, so you hear her say that a couple of times, group, um, and uh, there's a, a look of, um, there's not a look of relief as she does not receive a message in return. Um, Cordelia, what do you do? <clears throat> do I hear this out in the hallway? Yes, okay. everyone is aware that this has happened. Okay, um, I will <clears throat> uh, try and hurry uh, Jessica to move forward, like to, she'll kind of like try and push him forward to like, come on, we need to see what's going on. Right. So you and Jexter both make it up to the top level. Um, I will then seeing Shane and, and it, it, there's just like a huge portal kind of thing, right? Or is it just the door and you're just going in? So when you come up uh, and look into the room, you see nothing and you need some clarification as to what's happening. Yeah. That you're so, informed that. Yeah, she would, she would ask what, what the hell is going on? Um, and I presume they just relay that. Yes, indeed. Cool. Um, I will try. I will grab. Let me see. What have I got? What have I got on me? While um, you're doing that, if I quickly jump in and say a massive thank you to MCR Music Three for another three hundred bits. <laughs> they never seem to give give up donating. So thank you very very much. So. Uh, Alias, if you want to roll that macro. Oh, he's frozen. He has frozen. Well, we can just go with what he just rolled there. That'll work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So at the, we have two 18s. Those are going to be the the big winners. Um, yeah. so it's, uh, me and Zelmira. Let's do a roll off there, Zelmira. Massive thank you, music. Much appreciated. I oh, you're going to beat that. All right, let's you're see what that I too. get. A 12! <laughs> there you go. That's a D6, if I remember all right, believe That's a D6. Has to be used tonight. That's Thank right. you. I I will grab my... Just grab a candle, a candlestick, okay. and I will just put half of it in and then Into try it and then pull it back out and see if it... It does not... Nothing appears to happen to this candlestick. Okay. Um. Right. Um... Artem, your dragon. Y yeah, yeah. Um, I think we should make a leash for it and see if we can send it in. Okay. Can you? Okay. Y yeah. And um, he will uh, he will take a rope out of his uh, uh, out of his pack and tie it to uh, tie it to Jade's body. Mm -hmm. And uh... still weird. <laughs> still weird. But awesome. Uh, yes, but and, uh, awesome. <laughs> um, and uh, he will send Jade into the uh, in, into the tile. All right. Uh, does this? What does Jade classify as? Jade is a homunculus. He is a homunculus. He is a uh, he's a familiar. He's a mechanical familiar. So I need to know: Is it uh, classified as a construct? Um. Yes, I would imagine that it would that it is, and I'm, right. I can double check, but I'm pretty sure that it is. Double check. I mean, if it is a homunculus, then I don't believe it is a construct. If it's so, it, it depends. Our, our, tiny construct. It's a tiny construct. Okay, yes. in that case, nothing happens. Oh, um, I, I think it might need to be a per per person going in. Can you communicate with your dragon thing? Uh, yeah. Uh, what do I say to him? <sighs> does he see anything? Is no, he's not going through. He, he, it does not work. The construct oh. does not appear to be affected by the, the teleportation. Oh. oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I see. Sorry, my mistake. I thought you meant like he just goes in and it's like, there's no, like, okay, my bad. Um, right. Okay. Um, with a, did I do an Arcana check on the tile, Sean? I can't even remember. You did. Uh, you determined that um, it's difficult to know exactly where they went, but you don't get the impression that it was very far. Um, teleportation spells that, that have a great distance usually require a ritual, um, quite a bit of pomp and circumstance, a circle of some kind, uh, just teleporting like that. 
you're not aware with a 13, I believe is what you rolled, of there being magic at a higher level that allows something to just, you know, whether this was um, Misty Step or Dimension Door or what exactly, you're not really aware of what the spell was, but you're pretty sure that it wasn't a high enough level for it to have gone very far. So it's got to be within, you know, 30 to 500 feet. Okay, he's he relays that to the group, but you can see Artem visibly starting to panic. He's wringing his good hand with his mechanical hand and, and he's breaking out into a cold sweat. I begin to detach the rope from the dragon, okay. uh, wrap it around my own waist, okay. and we'll look at Artem and just say, I will bring her back, and then I will try and put an arm through. Okay, how much of the rope do you have around your waist? I would say like a good, like enough to tie it into a knot. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, you put your arm over the space, nothing happens. Yeah. Um, so I don't, nothing goes through. No, uh, you, you you put your hand over the space of where uh, the uh, trapped area has been identified. Just putting your hand over it, nothing seems to happen. I keep going. You take a step she, onto she, it. Oh. I was gonna say something quick. She was moving forward. I sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but he was no saying, problem. Cor um, Cordy, I've I've heard how you can yell. You might end up in the same place if you get there. Yell as loud as you possibly can. You know what I'm talking about. Yell, right? Well, if I can hear you, we'll all come straight to you. I'll be listening. Backstory there. Steps forward, I'll say, everyone, quiet. Listen for them. All right. So Cordelia, as you step onto the space, there's a flash of red light, and you disappear, and the rope falls cut off between where she went and the space that you are all currently sitting in. Cordelia has disappeared. Cordelia, um, you find yourself floating in a barely lit uh, purple miasmic haze. I, and I will just sit and I will say every day, shh, and just listen as intently as I can <laughs> with everyone I, else. Once I'm through, um, she'll kind of shake her head to just reach for the rope, see the rope's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will cast Thaumaturgy and just yell as loud as I can. Very good. So, uh, Boletus and Zelmira, you hear... <laughs> some hideous sounding creature nearby just screaming. It <laughs> echoes out and the, this bizarre mist that you're in changes the sound of it. It sounds blood curdling and out for your blood. Um, Spores just explode from Belitus in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> you guys made me ink. All right. Oh, sorry, um, my dear. The two of you look and you are still, you're beginning. You, as, you feel like as you breathe, you're breathing in this miasma and it's, it's having an effect on you and it's, you feel like you might be, be becoming a part of this. Um, as the minutes tick by, you don't feel like you have very long. Um, Shane, make a perception check. Does anybody want to help Shane? Oh yeah, absolutely. Anybody uh, have proficiency in perception? I do. All right, then you may roll with advantage, Shane. Okay. I have a 16. 16. You think it is coming from the east? The, uh, uh, the east. Okay. Um, perhaps through that door. Okay. Um, and did it, was it clearly, did it seem like, um, it was, sorry. Um, did it's it right. seem like it was triggered by the step? Like I was sitting there in the door when I watched. Did it seem like when they stepped on it, it was triggered? Oh, definitely. As Cordelia put her hand out uh, onto the space, uh, nothing happened. When she took a step on it, she instantly disappeared. Okay. Um, you'll not know if it's a line of traps, so he will um, say, don't worry. 
don't worry, I'm coming for you. And his his form will change somewhat as he begins to shout, his eyes glow, a bright yellow golden light begins to shine out from his light and uh, from his eyes and his um, mouth. And he transforms and golden luminous wings will shoot out from the side of him and he will jump up and he will take flight and say, I will not leave you. And he will shoot in the direction of the door and run through it. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my God. I just peed. So train. <laughs> you too. Ooh, I inked again. I'm so, feeling uh, less like a god now. <laughs> you fly across the room and crash into this door, uh, which just <laughs> blasts off of its hinges and reveals a slate stone courtyard with a wrought iron fence surrounding it. Uh, it's about 15 by um, 10 feet in diameter and then surrounding it just purple void. As far as your eye can see. Is there a way to identify, um, like, it, I can't see them with the trying to look where it came from? When or? you come in, it's like trying to look through fog. You think that they're in here. Uh, Cordelia, how long does this uh, uh, screaming last? Uh, she would give it a good, like, f five second yell. So you just keep doing it and, like, keep re-upping thaumaturgy? Yeah, like, just she would just <laughs> keep... Zelmir and Bolitas, this creature, it's just... It's <laughs> relentless. It's just, uh, the the distortion coming from it is just absolutely petrifying. Um, it's a hellscape. And, yeah, uh, uh, Shane, you hear it. Um, uh, it's uh, from, from there, you're passive. Uh, it's over 10, right? Yeah, I have 15. 15. From there, uh, you you are definitely aware. It is coming from the northeast. And as you peer out, you can see the form of something floating in the mist. Um, I, we, I know we might be getting to the point where other people are acting too, but I will look back and say, toss me the rope. Let me go. And... Yeah, and and tie it to the and and tie it to the 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 the, the fence when I go out. All right, uh, so that will bring us to uh, Jexter. Jexter, you haven't uh, been involved in this yet. What do you wish to do? Well, first, I'm just going to curse wizards because these fucking bastards just trap their houses and send people into purple, foggy places. And who does that? Who does that? These fucking wizards do that. And then I'm going to look at my own abilities. I'm going to feel fairly useless and be ready to hold a rope. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do you go in the room with uh, Sekhmet and... God, no, uh, I'm not going in there. All right, God, so you're just sort of hanging back. Like, God, okay. Anybody that goes in there, they walk around, they look around, they disappear. All right. Shane went in there and turned into some kind of epic avenging golden angel thing. I'm... Well, to be fair, you've seen him do this I'm before. I'm an anchor, okay? I'm an anchor. <laughs> Uh, Sekhmet and Artem, uh, you have been uh, instructed to throw Shamsiel the rope. Now Artem's I'm drinking cosmic juice. Artem is going oh, to make a, uh, make a calculation based on where he knows the tile is, and he's going to make a leap from his square into the courtyard where, uh, where Shane is to join him. All right, that does not require a roll. You can jump five feet, no problem. All right. Uh, he will. Uh, he will also. He has multiple coils of rope, and so he hands one to Shane. He has one himself, and uh, and he's ready to. He's ready to fish. Okay. So what are you doing? Are you gonna throw the rope? Are you gonna tie the rope and then jump after? Is it like a spacewalk? How is this gonna happen? Um, he is going to uh, take a. a, a um, who do I have in my? I must have something of consequence. He's gonna reach the first thing of heft in his. Uh, um, he's got a he's got a tankard, and he's gonna take a tankard, tie it to one end, and he's gonna hold on to the other end and tie it to one of the posts in the uh, one of the grates. Okay. And he's going to throw it out to where he sees the form of Cordelia. All right. So, um, so you have yet to see it, but uh, I'm going to say with this racket that um, Cordelia is making, and also with uh, Shane having uh, seen it, and he will 
tell you where to throw. Uh, make a ranged attack at disadvantage, please. Oh, I don't like disadvantage. Mm, very obscured. Um, all right. Do I How about no? <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, uh, 14. So you rolled a firebolt? Uh, that was the, I don't have anything <laughs> equipped at the so moment. So the problem with that is that, that then uh, that is um, going to add your proficiency modifier. So what is your proficiency modifier? Uh, proficiency modifier is three. So three, so 11. Uh, 11 is enough as this, it, and as it clears the, um, sh- the, uh, uh, what is the word? I'm like threshold of the uh, of the fence. It immediately goes into slow motion and begins to, as if it's like pushing against some sort of thick soup or um, like sludge, and begins to tumble end over end. The rope sort of floating out behind it, moving towards Cordelia. Cordelia, you still cannot see anything, and all of a sudden there's a thunk. You look down and you see floating right at your side, a tankard with a rope around it. Ooh, I will grab that. Okay, you have grabbed it. And I will try pull, like pulling myself along the rope. As long as I don't feel like I'm yanking the rope to me, as long as like mm-hmm. if I'm pulling myself towards it, I will keep going with that. With the the precautions that uh, Artem has taken, you can definitely pull yourself, and if that is what you wish, uh, we will come back to you with that. Boletus and uh, Zelmira, what do you do as you feel like you have moments left before you become one with the mist? Oh, man. Boletus, do you have any <laughs> any ideas? Um, looking around, can we see anything? So you see each other, because you are very close. Yeah. Make a perception check. I mean, obviously, we we know where that noise come from, do we? Uh, Direction-wise? Your passive is quite high. Yes, uh, it was from your south. I rolled a 25. 25. You you can definitely see, uh, much as I described as Elmira earlier, uh, something darker in the uh, this cloudy mist. It's hard to tell exactly how far away without knowing what the size of it is. If it's a monster, do you want to go towards it? I think we should go towards it. Ready your weapons, my dear. And I will okay. uh, I will go forward in front of so her. Again, as you as you try to move forward, nothing happens. And you think, move forward. And you begin to float towards it. Um, and after a moment, you run into Cordelia as she is holding onto her rope and beginning to pull her way back. But really, you look at uh, up to see barely visible the forms of Zelmira and Boletus, uh, almost as if their features had been painted onto the mist. Oh, hello, Cordelia. Have you seen a monster? <gasps> no. Grab this. Can we see it? You can see her, but you can't make out what she's saying. I would like to cast light on the tankard that I'm holding. All right. There is a bright light now, and you can see this tankard. You can see the rope extending from it out into the mist. What's on the other end? You have no idea. Um, Shane, what do you do? Uh, At some point, he would also cast light upon a point of the um, home to Britain to summon a bright golden light. Okay. Um, similar to the radiance that sort of exudes from him in this form. And then um, grab the, I guess we sent out a rope. So try to um, gather everyone and tell everyone to hoist and pull back um, and being ready to fly out if he needs to do the same thing. So Okay. Um, so with a bright light now illuminating this area, uh, you can see a little bit better. Um, there is a slightly lighter space in the um, in the purple haze that you can purple haze as you that you can start moving towards and with the rope and with all of you all together, uh, Cordelia. I want you to make a um, let's see. This is going to be an. De- mm. May I just say you're looking mighty handsome today. 
Uh, You've done something different with your hands. Looks great. Have I got any idea what she's about to do? Insight check, Cordelia. Have I got any idea what she's about to do? Uh, um, Unfortunately, no. Uh, But you can also make an insect insight check, Bolitas. Insight check, insight (laughs) check. Twelve. All right. So you think that um, the the fact that moving your hands through this miasma has had no effect. It seems to be mental power that allows you to move and that if you wish to be attached or affixed to somebody, it's going to have much more to do with what you're thinking as opposed to what you're doing. Uh, Oh, that makes sense. I'll put my arms, I'll try to put my arms around both and just think about going forward. Okay, so you... Put your arms out, and uh, Zemir, you feel yourself sort of being pulled towards Belitis. And for a brief moment, your hands actually can't quite grasp each other as there is not enough substance. But all of a sudden, there is a solidification, and you're able to hold on to it briefly. And Belitis grabs you to him. Belitis, you f- move yourself and fix yourself to Cordelia as you grab onto a piece of her cloak and Cordelia, you begin to pull back down towards the wrought iron fence, which becomes brighter and brighter as you approach the light. And as you cross the threshold of this wrought iron fence, you suddenly all appear in front of the group that is gathered there as uh, Zelmira and Boletus, you feel intense pain as your corporeal forms begin to return. And you both suffer a point of exhaustion and collapse onto the flagstones. Let's see. Arcana Jexter with a what? With a 19. So you've never cast this spell yourself, um, but uh, you know that it creates an extra dimensional space. There must be something around it. Um, it's hard to know exactly what, if you had to guess, some form of the astral plane sort of created specifically for this spell, very powerful bit of magic. Um, so the fact that it's purple, you're, you've never been to the astral plane. You don't know what color the astral plane actually is. You don't know if this is in fact the astral plane, but it stands to reason that it would behave like the astral plane. Yeah, that doesn't help any. Yep. But, Boletus, Zelmira, you are safe on terra firma. Uh, Jane immediately goes, she, he looks to Cordelia first and look. it looks like she's okay, like she's um, done that, but then he immediately goes to help up um, Zelmira. Okay. I will uh, help up Boletus if, if I'm able. All of you are able to stand, but you felt better. Angelic wings kind of vanish, kind of cast off like sparks into the night. Artem is uh, is hugging Zelmira very tightly, and his 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 body is kind of like crouched, and you can see like tears streaming down his face. He was terrified. And Zelmira's breath is still relatively ragged as she kind of buries her head into Artem's shoulder and just you can see the back her hands are on his back and they just squeeze so tightly and you are safe you take a moment to collect yourselves does anybody have anything they wish to say or do Cordelia would want to once helping everyone to their feet Cordelia would want to do one of those like, like, like tough guy hugs of like grabbing him and then pulling him in and like a pat on the back kind of thing. She doesn't show much affection. This is about as much as it gets. He did good. We got back because of you. Artem raises his head uh, barely and he looks at you, Cordelia, and he just sniffles and he said, that was brave. Thank you. And he just buries his head back in her shoulder. And DM, I'm going to look around the room to see if there's anything I can see visibly that would 
without you know, glowing or anything yes there's like nothing glowing however it is very obvious to you that on the chair here to the north east is a large leather bound tome I told you spell books sorry is it open is it closed it is closed it looks very similar to the ones you've seen so far I feel awful. I meant Shane instead of Autumn. <laughs> oh, that's that's okay. I knew I knew that's what you meant. He still looked at you and said thank you. <laughs> okay, for you. Why would you knew, change that? I that's knew what so you mean. Meant. Sorry, I'm sorry. He, he I, I knew what you were going for. He wasn't he wasn't responding to your tough guy hug. Oh, oh. don't worry. Belitas will go and give Shane a cuddle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I, do we know? I've do got we hugs know for it? everyone, guys. That's fine. This is, as your wings I'm so unfold. happy you're all okay. <clears throat> you were saying just watch to... him do. Get, uh, I'm sorry, um, Shane. Can you do your magnum again? It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. I look forward to La Tigre. So pretty. Wow. <laughs> um, now can 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 I tell exactly what would have triggered? Uh, was it? Physically stepping on a spot. Uh, was it you roll with your was it? with your nineteen. I would say uh, definitely physically stepping on the spot. Um, you have seen it uh, work from people who step here. Uh, whether or not that is all, it's difficult to say. Um, hmm. Uh, but also with a night, actually no, with a nineteen arcana, you can see uh, the telltale signs of just the faintest amount of cat hair that is on this um, floor. Um, this white cat hair. Very easy to miss. Um, and there is no cat hair in um, very specific arcane sort of squiggles and runes. Um, and you know that this, that the two um, squares that are uh, marked are trapped and none other. Okay. I'm just going to quickly use a little spell uh, prestidigitation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use it twice to literally soil those areas just to mess them up. To try Sorry. to mark them really obvious kind of delineation. Even I have to cast it a couple times and prestidigitation is just a cantrip that I can cast several times that will allow me to just mark the area up so that it's very clear where so to step. It's where big to step large grease paint like smears upon both of these five foot squares and uh, i'm calling everybody in um guys come on Let's... don't step there wizards this is why i didn't go to school for this really who right. does that i mean put a rubber band on the door or something like that but <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they Penny is that what they did it. in the wizard dormitories? <laughs> you would have no idea. <laughs> All right. Do you know what caused that, Jexter? I think it's the book. Uh, Actually, uh, have you, we seen the book? <laughs> uh, he points at it, and now you you do <laughs> now see. Now we the book. do see the book. Um, uh, Jexter, um, again, with your 19, um, this is a spell that's probably triggered to activate when anybody not determined by the caster uh, steps on the spare space. Yeah, probably the easiest way is to just avoid those spots. Okay. Um, I don't even want to touch that thing. I, I don't have the strength. The book? Yeah, the book. I'll oh. go get it. I think we need it. All right. A second it probably you, has the spell or a letter we could use. You uh, carefully avoiding the trap spaces, you move over to the chair, you pick it up, and it is indeed a black leather bound tome like object um, with the picture of Morden Gainen on the front, and on the spine, there's a large letter E. Does it open? It does not. It's the same metallic mm -hmm. inset E. Okay. It, like was the, it was on the. It was on the chair. <clears throat> it was on the chair. Yeah. Yes. And the first one was on the chair as well. Yes, it was. All right. Uh, Artem is going to squeeze Zelmira's hand, and um, he looks at her and he says, "I'll be right back." And he goes um, to the room where he was previously, with the 
with the dragon uh, carpet. Okay. Are um, there? Oh, go ahead. Uh, what are you going to do? Are there, uh, these are similar red chairs, is that correct? They are similar red chairs. Uh, are there very, tomes? There is, in fact, a tome. Um, to the south uh, west uh, on that chair, there is a large black leather bound tome sitting on the chair. Um, he will send Jade to retrieve it. All right. Jade lands on it. How uh, much can Jade lift? Um, Jade has a strength of something. Uh, it's good. good. Yeah, uh, four. Strength of four. Strength of four. Ooh, Jade's gonna strength need to make four. a. Jade's gonna need to make a strength check. It used to be on okay. about fifty kilos, but I couldn't do it now. It strength of strength of four. Uh, it, it rolled a sixteen. That's yeah. That's good. <laughs> so you see it. The the the, uh, the feet come out. It tries to lift it, and then some additional feet just sort of the, the the feet sort of separate and make sort of a like a ten legged uh, apparatus, and the wings as it lifts. As it does, you look up and you see these crossed rapier above the fire pit, sort of stir and float down in front of the fireplace and then there's a flash shing, and they duplicate themselves and then shing, duplicate themselves again. There are now six floating rapiers in this room that move to attack you. We will roll initiative, friends. All right. I'm gonna First close the door. First combat of the game. I close the door. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Good callback. See ya. I close the door. Ryan, Ryan. Let's close see door. here. Oh, there's no initiative button. Is that? Uh, it should be on your character sheet on DD. On the character sheet, I thought that it was going to be in the. In oh play. yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. No pressure, no no rush. And, and I've got to put these there, and then I'm going to change our music to something more appropriate. And I think I'm going to give these all their own little colored dots so as to avoid confusion. I forgot to click my token. Do you want me to roll again? Uh, no, I'll take care of it. Okay, thank you. Purple and pink. I'm, I'm telling you guys, this is what happens when you start wandering around wizards places. Uh, yes, so there's a lot of cool books, but... What did you roll, Cordelia? A 12. Okay. There you are. I have Shamsiel, I have Zamira, Artem, Boletus, Cordelia. I don't see Jessica there yet. Hmm. He had a 10.14. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try again. Um... Were you supposed to put them into the turn order? No, you just uh, click your token and then click your initiative and it should come up automatically. Oh, I clicked uh, initiative on D&D Beyond. Mm -hmm, that is what yes, you're supposed to, but if you did not have your token selected, that it will not have come up. Um, so uh, what did you roll? Uh, 11, 16. It's in the chat, but not the That's fine. I have got thing. it. No is, that what it is that what you mean? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so when rolling initiative, uh, the critical first thing that we should all do is first in roll 20, select your own token. That's where you select it and little digits pop up to yeah. make sure okay. you're selecting it. Then go to D&D Beyond and click on initiative there. And, and it should connect everything seamlessly. Okay. Okie dokie. At the very top of our first combat, we have Shamsiel with a 22. I go by Shane, thanks. And Shane, he, sorry. Um, <laughs> walks... Here, uh, can hop over, yeah? Yes, can hop over. It's very well marked, thanks to Good Jessica. To so 5, 10, 15, 20. I can't get through the 20, oh, no. 25, oh, no. 30. I couldn't get through his space, correct? Uh, that's right. You cannot, you cannot right. voluntarily end your turn in somebody else's space. So I will, um, hearing that there is a threat, I will um, lean around the corner and as I'm drawing the silver... Um, sort of silver-crusted longbow and will 
fire a shot at uh, let's go for red all right slightly um, increased dc uh, uh ac because of fighting for the thing but i ignore cover never mind then and he will pull the longbow extra far back okay make a sharpshooter shot uh, oops that first one is a natural two for a seven to hit which is so <laughs> it sticks into the wall and misses the rapier they're very All small right. targets i will do it again um do it again let's see oh uh, hold, hold on hold on hold again. on hold on uh, let's see i am going to expend a superiority die to at the very last minute try to correct my aim um as i'm releasing it and try and send it in the right direction Man, it's not a good first turn. How does 14, 14 does not hit, I'm afraid. That's pretty bad. Um, and I will just stay there and feel bad about myself. Okay. Sorry, Shane. Sorry. Right. Right. Uh, Jade is back with me with a book. Is that correct? Jade is in the process of flying towards you uh, with the book in hand. It was his moving the book that triggered the initiative. He's not back to you yet. He's where, moving at half speed. Where is uh, where is Jade? Right Jade now? will be. Uh, let's say he's right underneath where Red is. Oh geez. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, Artem is going to um, uh, Artem is going to press his middle finger all the way back uh, on his mechanical hand, and he is going to spray. Uh, a phosphorus-looking powder all over the um, all over the rapiers, and he's going to cast fairy fire as they are coated in this powder and begin to ignite. Mm-hmm. Got some deck saves as they and they tell they can tell that there is a threat. Uh, I've got a 19 for red. Passes. That's I saves. have a 20 for blue. Saves. Ooh. I have an eight for green. Fails. I have an. Eight. Five for orange. I have a three for purple and a. Does it take up the entire? Is it fifteen foot square or is it twenty foot square? So 20 I can foot catch square. all of them. Uh, yes, I see what you're saying. Twenty foot square. Yep, you get them all. Uh, so there's one more. I believe pink rolled a twenty. Is that all of them? Uh, yes. Yeah, so three one, of them. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six. So three of them. So we'll say the first, the, the front three failed. Uh, based on the colors that you announced, it was blue, green, and orange that failed. Gotta love that eidetic memory. So, uh, they begin to glow as they were not able to get out of the way of your phosphorus. Blue, green, and which? Orange. Orange. All right. Anything else for you, Artem? Yes. Uh, he is going to take a 510... 15, 20, uh, and he is going to sit in the hall and uh, concentrate. Concentrate. All right. Where, where are you going, Arm? What? What? Oh, shit. Zelmira, it is your turn. So, hearing a ruckus erupt from the other hallway, Zelmira finds strength again and quickly makes her way to the door, being careful to avoid the spot. <laughs> That sucked her into a dun, horrible dun, 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 miasma. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, so that, I just avoid that T, that okay, T zone, yep. right? That's it. Okay. So I can't get past Shane, um, but her first thought is of her brother. And so she peeks over his shoulder and seeing that Artem is safe, she is comforted by that, and I will hold an action um, until I am within. Mm, beep boop bop. Let's say until I can see one of the um, whatever is attacking us. Because all I'm right, not so sure holding yet. an action until you see a target. Yep. And uh, you know it's assumed that you all call out what you're actually fighting. Uh, Cordelia, it is your turn. I approach and then head over. Am I able to head into the room? Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You cannot without using a dash action. I will not do that then. I will get to 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll get to here, if that's all right. Okay. Avoiding the zone. Avoiding the T, yep. Um, and I will... 
currently I will I will summon my spiritual weapon. Okay. Um, what is form does your spiritual weapon take? Uh, just out of curiosity, it's going to have to wait as you're going to have to make do with a a shiny scimitar for the time being. <laughs> what my my spiritual weapon? Yes. Uh, it's a um. Her eyes kind of turn like a, a dark black, and it's almost like the veins around them sort of start to pull black as well, as this giant scythe appears floating behind her and, and follows cool. her as she runs over. Um, you should have control of that icon. Epic time. That kind of looks like a, like a circle there, so that's... that's uh... Close enough for today, at any rate. <laughs> and I will... I Let me see. Um, who is ahead of me? That is... Sorry, who is this here? That is Zelmira. She is holding an action. Got you. Um, I will... I will cast Guidance on you, uh, oh. reaching forward and um, just say, think, think, uh, think of your action wisely, seeing that she's kind of waiting and holding. Just want to make sure you know, Guidance will not affect an attack roll. No, I know, I know. I, I don't okay. know what her, her strategy is. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to fill up my turn. Gotcha. You are concentrating on guidance. Sahmet. Um, should I, can I move? So move through your ally space through. counts as difficult terrain unless you have the mobility feat. And that I feel you have to attack to use that, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, so, um, you can, the only way you would be able to get into the room is if you dashed using both your movement and your action. So I don't need in the room, but like, I'm kind of in a weird spot. So like, how aware am I of what's going on on the other side of the wall? And can I yeah. just cast things from here? Most things that you could cast would require line of sight. Um, and I don't think you have anything that you can cast that appears on the other side of a wall. Uh, Tabaxi has a special speed. Can I get through the people anyway? <laughs> uh, tabaxi agility, yes, okay. indeed you can. So uh, you can use your movement and your Tabaxi agility to get into the room without any trouble at all. Uh, do you wish to get into the room? Yeah, can I go like right here so I'm not blocking the doorway? Yep, absolutely. Um, so Sekhmet just sort of bristles for a second and then begins running through and she moves past you. She claws along the wall. She leaps off of your shoulder, Sam's Hill. She flips over your jexter and lands in the room. Uh, you still have an action. Great. I'm also going to cast spir spirit, spiritual, spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon. Excellent. What does yours look like? Uh, Ko Kopesh. Ko Kopesh. Kopesh. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna make your. What color would you like your spiritual weapon to be, Cordelia? Can't be black. Gold. All right. Segment. We'll make yours gold. Cordelia, what color do you want yours to be? Black. Can't be black. <laughs> <laughs> black. All right. I'll do this. Gonna um, be difficult. She wants it color emo. There we go. How's that? Uh, color that's. Emo. I want it color edgy. <laughs> e for yeah, edgy, edgy, not emo. I think that'd be top pink. So, so that little that little uh, uh, skull is that doing it for you? All right, I just yeah, that does that does it for you. Obviously, none of you are former goths. I have to tell you, it would be the blackest black. Although right. when I was a former goth, <laughs> the only color I would wear was like neon pink, <laughs> or oh, what it's worth as one an of accent, those. an accent. <laughs> My favorite oh, colors right. are, are rips and safety pins, so there. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Edgy. I'm gonna so. I'm gonna need pictures of this edgy phase. I need to see this. <laughs> oh, I'll post them in Discord. Heck yeah. We'll all laugh. I never had an edgy phase. You're just, edgy right now. It's okay. Just, yeah, that's right. Yeah, if you've never had an edgy phase, you're in the edgy phase. Oh, good. Oh. Good to know. Um, Sekhmet, um, so you have cast spiritual weapon. You may use it to attack if you wish. Yeah. Uh, blue, green, and orange have advantage. Um, 
red? Is that what you're asking? Are you sure? <laughs> if you were to attack shot, blue, green, and orange. Mr. DM, you said they have advantage, not Sorry. she has advantage. On I them. see, yes. Uh, yeah. You have advantage to hit blue, green, or orange. Okay. Right, I should have been more clear. Yeah, I didn't want to hit something that had a better chance of losing a, or winning against me. <laughs> um, well, then blue. <laughs> okay, so your Kopesh comes forward and strikes blue. Roll attack for your spiritual weapon, please. <laughs> I understood this was us in the beginning of the stream. <laughs> Way back in the beginning, we all Except we didn't have any help. We didn't have help. That's, no, it's true. I know. I have my my yes lifeline on yes, the side you do. here. Um, oh, no friend. What do I do? Where is it? Scroll down. Scroll down. Sorry, I don't know where anything is. We still have these moments. Oh, it's good. Click the B. Did it happen? <laughs> It did. It did. One you have time. rolled a 13, which unfortunately does not hit. But it's at advantage, so she has one more. Uh, do it again. Uh, uh, 16, 16 does hit. Great, we'll take that. All righty. <laughs> and now click on the click thing. Click yeah. on the click thing. 11 okay. points of damage Ooh. on blue. Got it. I believe I can also cast Sacred Flame. Uh, bonus action for Spiritual Weapon. Indeed, you can cast Sacred Flame. Great. Uh, bonus action would have been to move the Spiritual Weapon. Oh, that's right. Indeed. Well, she could, have sacred right flame, in, she sacred could have flame summoned it right action. in front of it. Yeah, Sacred Flame is an action. So. Uh, but it's a cantrip. And she can, use, she can use her action to do Sacred Flame. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean, yeah. She can, yeah, so you can definitely use, uh, you can definitely, we'll say you summoned it in front of Blue, so you did not have to use your bonus action to move it. You may use your Sacred Flame. That's a dexterity saving throw on my part. Thank you I have that. rolled a natural one. So that is 11 points of, f nope, sorry. How much damage am I getting from your Sacred Flame? Do I click it again? Yeah. You click Sacred Flame. Mm -hmm. It's a cantrip. It's at the top. Okay, I can do this. All right, now, now click, click on the click. damage. Five points of damage, and this rapier falls broken in half. Ah! Well done, <sighs> Sekhmet. Anything else from you, Sekhmet? I believe you have a little movement left if you wish to move some more. <laughs> Just going to hang out in this corner. All right, Jexter, you are up. Glow in my victory for a bit. All right, I have a question. <laughs> having having grown up as a harpool and having been tried to be pressed through wizard school, ugh, I am hoping that I would be somewhat familiar with these type of animated swords, animated mm -hmm. objects and things. And I have a simple question. Mm -hmm. Do they get the tax of opportunity? They do. There is nothing to suggest that they do not. I think they should. That's just me. stinky things. Um, I guess I can't just close the door. Yeah, that would not be good. Second, that's still in there. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, that's <laughs> one down. <laughs> no, there was that time in the temple that she totally saved me. I couldn't do that. That would not be pleasant at all. Five so, swords um, versus nine lives. My my money's on her. So, <laughs> I mean, there she is, is a goddess. <laughs> goddess versus inanimate objects floating around. I, you know, I can practically see the strings on those things. This is such a joke. I'm going to go in and brandish my rapier. All right. Against oh, great. brave. Brave, brave, brave. Um, fortunately, it is, 14 uh, hits. it is at advantage because it is glowing thanks to the Artem's fairy fire. I can um, roll even worse. I yes. brandish my rapier and swish around it in a circle and so swish around it again in a circle whatever magic is animating this as you come in and bring out and brandish it it brandishes right back and there's a ting, 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 as you are having a very uh swashbuckly buck literally that's not even a word swashbuckle it is now yep something swashbuckling <clears throat> uh anything else from you jexter no, I'm, but I'm telling you, there's strings holding these things up. You can see them. It's, it's wretched. Um, well, I'm going to stop right there. We're, we're about to the find line. out. Yeah. We're about to find out. So green obviously does try to attack you. Uh, let's see. That's not the right 
damage. So Wait, I'm, I'm not a paladin in this game, am I? Oh, crap. You're not. <laughs> So that's not a it's not a long sword. It is a rapier, which is a d6, it's a not a d8. Bunch of misses. I have an armor class of 13. Oh, but I still need to roll to. Hit still need to roll to hit. An 18 is, I believe, a hit. It's not greater than 13. Uh, so the uh, roll on the die is two. It is a plus one. So that is three points of piercing damage from green upon you. Uh, red moves forward to engage with you, Sechmet, and it rolls. Sechmet. Let's see, rolls You're to attack. Rolling publicly. Ooh. Yes, I am. I, know. Um, Look at him. I have rolled a crit. So that is 2d6. So eight points of piercing damage against you, Sahmet. Pink moves over the space where I'm going to just move him there. Uh, pink moves over the space where blue has fallen and attacks you, um, Jexter. Uh, hitting AC 16. It's a hit, uh, doing four points of piercing damage. Um, it then moves to the side. You may take a attack opportunity if you wish. Is that a yes or no? Yes, all right, roll for it. Silent as the grave, he attacks with opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying here. There are the trying. See, <laughs> so many buttons. For the jokes, and you stay for the silences. Right. So many buttons. The long our, silences. The one long of our silences. long silences that we oh, have no. advertised. That's, You're welcome. That's amazing. That's Come to Trapped at Home and <laughs> stare awkwardly at people in silence. <laughs> I mean, why should gaming be any different than the rest of mine? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm afraid a 14 does not hit. Yeah, I know. As purple flashes past you into the corridor, Zemira, your held action is procced. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to water whip one of these baddies. Let's see. So, um, there. can I... I can, can I kind of circumvent Shane? <laughs> or is he in my line of attack? Um, he's in your line of attack, so that gives a, a little bit of an AC bonus to the uh, the, the rapier, could, which is already move very into a space, to cut loose, yes. and move back out. Um, is it a ranged attack? It is uh, 30 so feet. If you move into Shamsiel's space, it does not have the bonus to AC, but you would be at disadvantage for attack. I would be Stay a disadvantage. There. And okay. also, since it's a held action, you can't actually move and do your right. held action anyway. So you have to do it from right there. Great. Sounds like a plan. Uh, can I use my inspiration on that? My of course physics? you can. All right. Thanks, MCR Music. Roll first to see what you roll and then okay, and decide. Okay. Let's see. You got this. Good grief. Here comes the general. Yeah. Ooh. I Rise up. There we go. Yeah. What'd you roll there? I rolled a 22. So there is no need for you to use your extra D6 because a 22 definitely hits. As Shamsail, you hear a whoosh from behind you, instinctually, instinctually duck as water comes splashing out over your head, doing 16 points of bludgeoning damage. It is barely up. Yay. And that is your held action. Now it takes its action. It attacks Shane. Uh, hitting AC 17. Uh, that'll do it. That'll do it. So I have three points of piercing damage. Uh -huh. And the final one is orange, which also attacks Sechmet. Hitting AC 11, which I believe is a miss. Sechmet, your AC is 13, so definitely a miss. Yeah. That brings us to Belitis. Um, right, before I forget, I'm going to do it now, but this doesn't count until the new round. Um, a massive thank you to Manx Works, who's donated $12 for four D6 inspirations. So, wow. alias, hit that button, <clears throat> and the top four people win that D6. If you've got a D6 already, obviously, we skip over you. So, a massive thank you, Manx. Um, so, who's that? Mm -hmm. Zalmira. Have I'm you got at a D6? the very bottom with a four. I've already got a D6. She's got a D6. We've got yeah. Sekhmet with a D6. Have you got a D6? Nope. Thank you nope. very much. You can have... You have a D6. Uh, Jexter has a D6. Shane has a D6. 
And Artem has a D6. So thank you very much, Manx. Sorry I took a while. I was waiting for the end of the round. No problem. Remember, those have to be used today, folks. Has to be used today. Um, okay, so where was this trap? Was it where the sword is? It is where the sword is, indeed. Oh, so I'm going to move 5, 10, 15 to there. So that's also trapped. Wait, that's also trapped. Where the big red T uh, is. Oh, okay. And then I would obviously do and that. And you would definitely be able to see it because of uh, Jexter's... Um, uh, sorry, Link. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I will move. Like a cat, to baby. There. All over um, the place. Then I just. Really <laughs> hates wizards. So, where was I? I was here, wasn't I? Yes, you were right so in the corner. Five, ten. No, so, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I can't really do anything else. I can't get around there. Um, yeah, um, 25, 30, 35. Yeah, you you could get into Shamsiel's space. So I've got 20, Attack, 25, 40, 30, 35, 45. 40, you 45, could make it 50. back to the space you're right in, but that would be all you could do. You would actually be able to attack. You'd just yeah. be able to walk out. You would be run up to it and then turn around and run back. I was thinking if there's a way I could Boop. get to there. You just... Uh, you can't go through the enemy's space, unfortunately. No. I, I'll go there, and then I'm going to do form whip. For All right. A, for a second, I legitimately thought your token was uh, Master Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda. I was thinking about looking for that, but uh, I missed. If only. <laughs> and then he has uh, the that's exactly as what well. That just like. is perfect What did you it. roll? What did you roll there, Belitis? I missed with a 10. You did indeed. Do you not have inspiration? Uh, I don't. I have not. So that is, that's an action. And then, have I got, what have I got to do as a bonus action? I shillelagh my staff. Very good. So uh, describe this for us, Belitis. It, on his staff, it's got loads of little mushrooms, and obviously there's some bigger ones on there and stuff. And all of a sudden, it literally transforms into some bright blues, and the mushrooms themselves transform into crystal, crystallized mushrooms, um, and become like crystals. And obviously, will hurt. That's really so, yes. cool. Just sort of, and they look far more deadly than they did a moment ago, and far less yes. delicious. Shamsiel, it is your turn. Aha! Well, we've got a cracked. Creepier in front. You uh, do. It is. Let's make a uh, attack against this one. I'll just go for it um, here. Uh, well, should I? No, I can't switch twice. So I'm just going to make the attack at disadvantage. Uh, double 25s to hit. Wow. wow, that is one destroyed rapier. Um, it's. It hates the damage. Does six do it? It had one hit point left. Okay, cool. Wait, um, he, just, he just shot a sword with a bow and arrow. Oh, did you use the, yeah, some sharpshooter? Man. So um, at point shoot. blank range, you, you're looking and you, you look down at the blade to shoot and then you look at the hilt, you look at the blade and you shoot the blade and ching, it just pops right off and the hilt sort of ching, 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 falls on the ground. Nice. Not... I'm gonna try that again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with the yes, other uh, one. Uh, if I may. You don't have to ask for permission. It just felt like the right It was the time. And try this again. This time I pull, you can hear the bow creak as he pulls it back, probably further than he should. 21 to hit. That's a big old hit. So this one's going to be. And that's on orange? 18 points of piercing damage. It's on orange. Uh, well, that kills it. I was going to ask you to um, uh, crit fish, but there's no point. I, I was still engaged in melee range anyway, though, so it wouldn't have been possible. Oh, uh, it, even though it has some um, advantage cancel, from... Cancel. Um, Regular from roll, because I'm disadvantaged because I'm too close to it. So. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, you get a bonus for honesty. But it is dead, <laughs> regardless. And so this uh, no, one, I'm gonna... you hit the hilt with this one, and, and it falls um, uh, blade first into the floor and just sticks there and look, it tries to pull itself out once or twice and then goes inert. I'm tempted to take more attacks, but I will not. I will run across oh. here. Uh, um, and actually, plus 15 damage behind Artem to here. So, yeah. 
I Sharp never shooter. get tired of seeing him do that. Sharp Every shooter time he does ridiculous. that, ridiculous. Tired of it. It's so Artem. beautiful. All right, um, Artem is going to run into the doorway, and uh, with his good hand, he's going to twist the monocle uh, with the um, uh, with the uh, magnifying glass on it, and it begins to emit a gas. Um, and with his ring finger, um, it becomes a piece of flint and steel, uh, and it ignites the gas, and he shoots a firebolt at green. All right, with advantage. Ring finger, promise carved in stone. Uh, that is a crit. Is it? Uh, nine and a 27. Is it at advantage? Yeah. Uh, it is at advantage, yeah. Nine. Did you roll a natural? T- what you did? Why yes, does it, it show up as a crit? That's it uh, does for me. It's it for me. Green. That's for me. It's green. Mine it's is not green. Weird. It's, it's roll, t- roll 20 is having fun. It's the okay, old format yeah. for something. No, I, I just, I just uh, um, hovered over it. It definitely was a natural 20. So congratulations on your crit. Thank uh, you. Total damage. Uh, it looks like 20. As the, uh, you just lining up the perfect thrust, Jesker, as it is blasted out of the air and collapses as little bits and pieces of shard as a molten metal in the corner. And uh, 30, with 34, bonus, Samus. 34? Wait, really? Yeah, yeah total. Yeah, you uh, didn't have to crit damage. Oh, crap. 34! Um, From a cantrip? Did you upcast it? It's, no, it's rolling crit. Four, it has to roll 4d10 because he crit. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he gets an extra 40, 4d10 plus 4, so... Holy crap, that's yeah, amazing. A badass cantrip. Um, uh, and with his bonus action, he's going to call Jade uh, out of the room into the hall with him. Comes around the corner, still holding on to this book, barely able to lift it. I will grab the book from him and uh, I will move Jade with me onto my shoulder and move back out into the hall. That's the end of my turn. Zilmira, it is your turn. Okay, uh, so Zelmira will m- move into the hallway and step over the fallen, <laughs> I guess, sword corpses um, into the room. Indeed. And I'm going to try something a little bit different, and I'm going to hit him with, it is, I think, called Fangs of the Fire Snake. Ooh. Yeah. It's a melee attack, as I recall. It is, it is. All right. So Don't forget to, I mark, need off to, your, get don't forget to mark off your key points. I, I will definitely be keeping track. Keeping track. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, wait, let me see. Okay, so I need to get close enough to one. So mm-hmm. I move. I still have like 40 feet. Yep. So... I think I can make it over to this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, although you do incur an attack of opportunity as you move out of the space of red. Do you still want to do that? Oh, I didn't realize that I... Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Okay. Red makes an attack of opportunity upon you. Okay. Hitting AC 19. <laughs> Yikes. Ah, oh, the hubris. And, oh, the hubris. It burns for six points of piercing damage. Okay. Well, these things happen. <laughs> okay. So, fangs of the fire snake. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me just take that damage, and I'll get back to my fangs of the fire snake. Beep. And oh, well, that's just telling you all about it. I I'm trying so you to figure do, you, out. You need to make an attack action. Yes. Hmm. It's not popping up under my attack. So you just just make it an arm strike. Oh, great. Cool. Easy peasy. Okay. Well, 13, unfortunately, is not a hit, so your hands... But what if I <laughs> do my inspiration? What if you do? Go for it. 1d6. Okay. <laughs> okay. Roll medium. Yay! Yay that Yay. is a hit. 17 nice. will hit. Okay, great. So, so it hits, so roll your damage for your unarmed strike. Okay. So already done. Uh, Where did it go? Oh, uh, eight points of bludgeoning damage plus 
1d10 points of fire damage. Roll d10. Yes. Okay. Nine points. Nine. Total of nine. 17, which is enough to destroy it with one blow. Uh, yes. I do think you have another attack, Zalmira. I do. So I'm going to do the same thing and try to get this other one with the fangs of the fire snake as well. Another key point. Uh, can you do that? Just double checking. You can do that twice in a round. I think you can. Okay. No problem. Monks are dumb. Yeah, monks are. Yeah, pretty <laughs> sure you can. Uh, in fact, just go ahead and do it. If you can't, we will. Um, we will. Remember for next time. <laughs> Remember for next time. <laughs> Great. Uh, did that roll? No. Okay. Let me go back. And I'm strike. Who happened to oh, Good grief. Okay, well, I rolled a uh, nat one. So. Yeah, so that automatically fails. However, yep. there's only one left. And bonus oh. action. Um, you could try again. <laughs> what? If you okay. want to use another key point, you extend your reach. You can hit it from there. You know what? Let's do it. You sure? It for the biscuit. No, All right. save your time. Ooh. All right, 25 is a hit. That's yeah. nine points of bludgeoning damage. Um, and you have uh, 1d10 to roll for fire. Dope. Roll in here. One. So one. It is still <laughs> up. Okay, well, I did my part. You the did anti -bur. indeed. So, <laughs> I don't even want to know what the anti bur is. Uh, Cordelia, it is your turn. Bring us home. That would be Hamilton. Here, the I, anti -bur, am. So, yeah. here I am. Not even been in the room yet. Don't even know what we're facing. I'm going to run in. There's going to be one sword. I'm going to think it's the only sword that there has been the whole time. And I'm going to solo whatever I'm stuck rolling with. I'm going to try anyways. Five, do you ten. want to use a bonus action to move your spiritual weapon? I would love to do that. Um, and I'm going to I want to hit that with my spiritual weapon, please. But just to make sure we know for the future, you can use your bonus action to move it 20 feet. So it was there. It was 5, it was. 10, 15, 20, so it can be right over you. Okay. It can go through walls, though. So, uh... Can I attack it from you here? You can. You can. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, I shall I shall do such thing. Um, how do I... How do I do the damage like this? trying to work out how I roll this. Spiritual oh, weapon, so that's eight points of, that'll be a very significant hit. If it hits, I need to roll for, you can see a hit roll there. All right, it's my, oh, there we go, sorry. Max damage on. Oh Whoa. yeah. What did you roll? 25 to that's hit. hit. Um, and then that should be, uh, it'll be eight plus three. So that's 11 points of damage with my spiritual weapon as, the, as she runs in and the scythe goes over her head and just comes through and just slashes it. Shing. Uh, you still have an action, but it is an action you can use to gloat as this scythe has cut this rapier in twain and the two pieces fall clattering to the ground. Is this really what you're struggling about? That is the end of combat. <laughs> and, then, and then you hear... Thank you, guys. I swear you hear Belita say, step in. what happens if I step here? <laughs> no, he doesn't. No. <laughs> 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 All right, end of the first combat. Uh, pieces of the uh, rapiers lie everywhere. Um, one is actually embedded in the floor right in front of the door. <coughs> and that is that. You see, guys, this is why every time, every time you walk into a wizard's place, flying swords, teleport spells, in a minute, we're going to be attacked by tentacles, I'm telling you. And it's not going to be the cool type of tentacles. Zelmira starts looking aggressively over each shoulder. <laughs> Artem kind of pokes his head from the door when he's like, what? what What kind of tentacles are cool tentacles? Tell yeah, you when you're old, you want to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Artem. Um, did you see the other books, Artem? So many books. Artem, the book in your hand uh, has a letter Y on its spine. I e got so y. many vowels, guys. I so many vowels. Sometimes Y. 
Is anybody almost seriously weighed. hurt? Yay. We almost weighed. <laughs> yeah. is, is, this <laughs> is gonna be this is gonna be some weird elvish word. I hope one of you speak elvish. <laughs> we almost, we almost <laughs> wide, I know. Are there uh, are there uh, any more books oh, on any of the red uh armchairs, Sean? Not in view. Okay. They're pretty obvious when you see them. Um, just knowing that you're on the lookout for them will probably be enough for you to know where they are. And we've still got the downstairs to explore. Also, this I, door uh, over here. And yes. this other door over here. Hearing Valita's trying to talk, I I quietly cast Thaumaturgy on him. <laughs> Thaumaturgy? Uh, Belitus. Is anybody seriously hurt? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where that come from. I look to the group. You hit the resonating frequency in your shell. <laughs> he looks inside his shell. He's not the brainiest. Oh, he's not too bad. Um, he asks if anyone is seriously hurt. So I should have it set up so that tokens... Uh... When you adjust your hit points on D and D Beyond, the yep. tokens should it's also. I, I think I'm the only one that took damage, so I, it I got hit. I got scratched a little. So did Zelmira. I have a little bit. Zelmira, did you take your damage? It's not showing up on. Yeah, your it should have. It's such a sliver; it's hard to see. Damage. Uh, I'll I'll discord you, Sean. Okay. So if I take, let's just check. It's reflected in my sheet on D. Uh, that's fine. I just I just I could have sworn I fix this but it anyway uh going on the list for next time um if uh, he doesn't see so anyone we'll... that's seriously injured he'll just carry on what do you do let's go open this door once. i'm gonna search this room first sean if that's okay all right um so uh make an investigation check please that's a 12 so um as you move past the fireplace you are you do take note of the fact that the no heat is being emitted from it um appears to be illusory um there are as i said these um trophies on the walls um and now blank spaces above the uh fireplace where the rapiers were crossed um you see a stag a wolf a, a, a strange stag-like head that also seems to have feathers going along the, the, the neck. Um, you may make a nature check. Anybody who is proficient in nature check may... Uh, yes. May... Oh, that's something I could do. And he rolls a natural one, no doubt. 23. Oh, pretty good. 23. It is a periton. Sort of a half bird, half stag. Um, there is also a dog, but looking at it, it um, has... Um, preternaturally red eyes, um, different from all the other um, uh, stuffed heads in this room. Um, and you get a creepy feeling from it. Anybody- That's a uh, good boy. Anybody uh, uh, proficient in religion may roll. Yes. I am. Well, I imagine Cordelia as a cleric herself. I got a 13, I, not great. And Sekhmet as a goddess herself. Yes. Well, since this is happening while you are looking at the Periton Belitus, we will say that Sekhmet, you believe that this is a fiendish hound, commonly referred to as a hellhound. Um, but with a rule of a 17, there's something odd about it. Every fiend that you've ever heard about uh, being slain on the Prime Imperial Plane, they simply fall into dust or ash or flame, leaving no corpse behind. Um, you know, with your roll of 17, that a fiend killed on the Prime Material Plane um, is not actually dead. It is simply, uh, its corporeal form on the Prime Material Plane is destroyed. You must kill it in its natural plane in order to actually have it dead. The fact that there is a head in here at all suggests that something is up. Yeah. Hey, sick um... fit. You think if I animated these, they would sing like a little chorus? I tiki, 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 tiki. <laughs> suggest not doing that right now on the dog as much as I would love to see that on the other one. Um, I think we should just stab this dog. 
But we should probably figure out where this dog came from. What do you a weird order of thing? things that you suggest sometimes. <laughs> is this like a cat dog Just thing? have to have faith in me. Yeah, is this a, you know... A, no. A blood feud from... No. Okay. Everything is below I don't me. know. I remember that Not one just time dogs. Sekhmet. I remember that one time. I just nod at Shane when she's not looking like... <laughs> uh, uh, other than that, uh, Artem, um, you're... Artem's... You're in... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, segment. Oh, he's, Go ahead. Not, he's not here, is he? No, you're all, where are you, Artem? You're all you're basically right in the same area. Segment, what would you're you right like there. to do with this, uh, this hellhound? Artem, you're well-read. What can you tell me of creatures from other planes? Um, okay, that's don't, don't ask him that open-ended questions. You know what'll happen. <laughs> tell me specifically well. what plane this dog came from. <laughs> Let me get my pipe out. <laughs> <laughs> there's a comfortable chair next to it. Too. There's a there's a rug on the floor. I can Apps comfortably curl up. Uh, would I know, Sean? Uh, are you trained in religion? I'm not. Uh, I will allow another investigation I check am. based on Sekhmet. Sekhmet, you've already rolled your religion. Told so I can't do it again. 18. It. This is fake. Obviously fake. Oh, well, this is huh, this is not really a huh, stuffed dog. <laughs> um, and no. he's going to start, like, prodding it. Yeah, with a roll of an 18, it is uh, clearly just a creation of cotton, various, uh, looks like an actual beast was used for the skin, but this was never a living hellhound. Um, however, the eyes glowing bright red are gems, two rubies. I ripped the head off the wall. <laughs> oh God, okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not uh, convinced okay, okay. it's stuck this, with cotton. I we, think we, I want to make to say sure this I can because kill it. In, in this case, this is completely appropriate, right? Rare. Yep. <laughs> things on the floor. I love this energy. She's she's the jacks of this group. Like she's just the id with those. <laughs> so she, I, can, I see Artem. He sort of come up to me like, you oh, better yes, work. Yes, yes. This is <laughs> absolutely and just in time to see <laughs> ripped it claws as cotton and sawdust begins to pour from it, and as the head sort of falls on the ground. You hear some breaking. The tongue appeared to have been made of some sort of porcelain. It cracks and these two little red rubies roll out. Um, worth about 125 gold pieces a piece. Someone else gets just, to bring you the chaos. I was going to say, who's keeping track of this? There is a loot pile in the journal. Precious just making sure. Rubies. And other than that, uh, the only other thing in this room is this uh, rapier sticking in the floor. Um, who has the rubies? I think it's the going into the loot pile. Yeah. That's not one of the, oh, okay. the ones we slayed, is or is it? The... It is. No one grabs it. Oh, okay. Do I notice anything, like, look, taking a better look at these swords, do I notice anything written on them or any kind of defining feature? Or are they just plain blades? Make an investigation check. I would love to. Ooh. A 20, not a 20. natural. So the first thing that you notice is that all of the other ones have been destroyed. They've either been broken in half or melted or shattered. This one is still intact and it is sticking in. And as you look at it, um, the blade itself is, at first glance, you thought it was metal, but looking at it now, it actually is, it is metal, of course. You thought it was steel. Uh, it is actually silver. And the hilt um, is very intricately uh, drawn, uh, uh, sculpted uh, with uh, spun wire moving around in swirls. Um, with a 20, um, you see uh, written on the um, the actual um, hilt, uh, the, not, the, not the hilt, the... Um, so the guard is the part around and the pommel's on the end, so I guess the hilt is the. Where's Ryan when we need him? Um, a cross uh, guard? Not the cross guard. It's the it's it's the um, the part you grip it, the actual part you grip itself, which I believe is the handle. The handle. The handle. <laughs> the handle. Uh, you see a very faintly um, inscribed uh, words. Uh, I do believe you speak celestial. I do indeed. It says, "Today is my dancing day." 
Mm-hmm. Uh, do I know anything of uh, maybe religious wise? If if this is from anything, or if it's just like a, a quote or like something they just put on there. Um, make a religion check. Like, am I aware of it having any kind of meaning other than as simply as it was? Uh, it just is written in celestial. Okay. Um, With a 14. I'm sorry, I should have. <clears throat> but I, I will uh, relay this to the group about it being silver and the, the celestial uh, markings on it. Um, and, and just because I've traveled with the group, do I know anyone who uses a rapier that could potentially benefit with something As you like think this? that, you see Jesker sort of, uh, yeah, him putting it back into his, uh, yeah. into his sheath. Um, hearing about a dancing day and uh, a rapier, I feel like you could potentially benefit from this. Oh. Do you think it's magic? It's a great It'll just question. make you feel confident. You know, I think like a it's placebo very magic. rapier. It's no, it's come, come closer. It's incredible, incredibly magic. Well, that's some, giving me a placebo effect. Give some me that thing. saying it's blessed by the gods. Really? Yes. And when you have it on your possession, your dancing is so elegant, you can win the hearts of anybody. You're so sweet. I'll take it, but you know better. (laughs) It's time for you to just, just, uh, Jexter. I don't know if you believe it or not, but that says it all. It's, it's time now. And I know you, you might not want it to be, but I, I think it's time for you. Yeah. And he just turns around and walks away. Oh, He's cryptic. so darling. So cryptic, that shade. He's so darling. <laughs> so, as you gather in this study, the wreckage of this battle around you, um, happy, joking with each other good-naturedly as Sekhmet um, very contentedly continues to rip pieces of this fake hellhound um, as she looks around the room. Those of you having endured the miasma, uh, feeling much better about yourselves, um, we will say good evening to all those who joined us tonight. Thank you very much for being here to witness our first session of Descendants of Avernus. Um, We will be doing this for the foreseeable future, uh, at least uh, five or six sessions, um, possibly more. We will wait and see. Um, But uh, we will find out what is in store for our adventures next week. Same time, same channel.